hello, hello, hello. What up, everybody? What's up, everybody? Why is it all uh, black screen on Twitch right now? What is happening right now? Is it not working? It just shows it as all black screen to me. Did I, did I screw something up? Did I do a did I do a bad thing? What's I broke Twitch? What's happening over there, man? Oh yeah, I guess I should get the gambling going on for you guys. Give me one second here. Get it going on. Yeah, it's just black screen on my end. What the hell? Acknowledge my loyalty, says I'm Butler. Subscribe with Prime for three months. You're on a three-month streak. Let's go. Guys, on Twitch, are you guys seeing a black screen? It says offline on my end. Is that what's... What? How did, the, how did this happen? Is it because I just streamed on Twitch the other day? Like, what the fuck? It says live now with seven viewers, but it just says black screen, right? What happened? What happened? What? What's up, everybody? Welcome, welcome, welcome. So what happens when you... Uh, $500 worth of Coke, Twitch is mad at you for that? Why would Twitch be mad at me? We see you over here? Okay, good. All right, cool. You see us over there? That's good. On my screen, it just says it's, it's all black screen or whatever. It's on? Okay, cool. Either that or I'm hallucinating. Yeah, yeah, double check. Double check with uh, somebody around you. You know, get an adult in the room. Let's double check. Let's make sure you're doing okay. What is up, everybody? How are we doing on this Friday? What's going on, man? How you guys doing? Speaking of Twitch, um, I had fun doing the Twitch-only stream yesterday. We did some gaming, and I thought that was really cool. Super fun. Um, and so I think, you know, I'm, I'm going to get some stuff sorted out for you guys over the weekend so that Twitch can be a really cool and exciting thing for y'all as well. Finto says new badge. Let's go prime force unite unity. Take my money. Not vengeance for life. All that good stuff. Thank God it's Friday. Have a great weekend, Josh. And don't drink too much Coke. Yeah, I'm trying not to, uh, Rossi again. Thanks for the, thanks for the dollar holla baby. Um, and also, we need to get those likes up. Smash that like. It's not gonna. It. It's not that hard. You can do it. You can do it. Hi, I've been in class for my electrical apprentice. I am on year three of five, so I haven't been able to watch streams. That's you know that's kind of a bummer. But you got to do what you got to do, man. You can always watch them on the replay. It ain't gonna smash itself. Yeah, that's true. Because then it'll go blind. I smashed. Hey, thanks, Bun Sauce. I appreciate that. Oh, yeah, gambling. I knew there was something else I was supposed to be doing. And we're only going to do it for like an hour. So you got to get it in. Get it in. The cloud bot is completely off. What the fuck? Okay. It's always got to be something. You know? I think what have uh, here's what I think is going on. Real talk, guys. Real talk. Let's let's get into this. Let's let's get right into this. I think what happens is we have these uh, interdimensional gnomes or trolls or um, little elf like creatures. Okay, that's what I. This is my personal theory on what happens. And these these little fuckers just have to go throughout the multiverse and. Whenever you got something figured out, whenever you got something sorted and you're you're doing great, they gotta come in and fuck it up. They gotta come in and like, oh wait, you've been you've been doing this the one way and it works so well for years and years and years. Well guess what? Now it doesn't. <laughs> and then they bail off to their stupid dimension. That's what I think is going on. Crazy. Uh as way of, for instance, man, maybe I could just tell you a little bit of story time. Can we do just a little bit of story time to start Friday off? 
just talk, talk about what's going on, why I was late and stuff. So, uh, the other night, um, the car, uh, we had a little, little issue, little, little accidente, nothing too crazy, little accidente in the car. Um, and it was very close to home. So we were able to like, you know, get it home and let it just sit in the driveway and something definitely damage, definitely damage. And the oil, like the container, the thing that holds all the oil, it got cracked. So all the oil like leaked out. Flat tire, leaked in oil, front end kind of jammed up, right? Uh, everybody's fine. Everybody's fine. Um, so I made I made an insurance claim on that because I, uh, and tell me, tell me if uh, this doesn't surprise you. I've been paying way too much for insurance for way too long. When I first bought the car, I had to get com like full coverage on it because that's what you got to do when the bank owns part of the car. And I paid it off years ago and never changed the insurance. So I've had just the craziest like I should be I should not have been paying that, okay? But I had like a diminishing what they call a diminishing deductible. So the deductible became zero. Which is kind of cool or whatever. So anyway, uh, I make an insurance claim on it. And the insurance just keeps claiming that it's going to be a total loss. Okay? Um, and nobody has looked at the car. Nobody's looked at the car. They're going to be looking at it today, which I'm going to have to try to keep an eye on my phone and see. Uh, I might have to step away for just a moment if they end up calling me or whatever. So they're supposed to look at it. So, like, this is the thing that's, like, so weird to me. They're, like, they say, like, this total loss thing. And, like, to be honest with you, I would actually prefer not a total loss. I'd prefer them to just fix the thing. I don't think it's a total loss. And they keep saying, like, oh, yeah, no, it's not a total loss. But, you know, we don't know. We're blah, 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 blah. Every phone call I've got. Everybody keeps saying the same thing. So it's a total loss, right? And I'm like, what are you talking about? So I, I went to uh, go pick up uh, the rental today. The guy at the rental place is literally talk, like saying, oh, yeah, so it's a total loss. And I'm like, what is happening here? Like, literally, nobody has looked at the car. What are you talking about? Total loss. Literally, like, everybody. I'm on the phone with this person, this person. It's a total loss, right? I'm like... Guys, maybe can we just like look at the fucking car? Maybe let's just look at the fucking car before we start. Uh... Yeah. It's the gnome trolls. Exactly. It's the interdimensional bullshit. Uh even if it's a little bit, it's a liability. Wait, what? The frame has to get fucked up to have it to be a claim it's total loss. Yes, that's what I'm kind of thinking, right? It's almost like they've been doing this forever. You shut your mouth when you're talking to me, Adam. Are you telling me that, look, I'll tell you what they, oh, man. You know what? This is one of those situations where I probably shouldn't go too hard because I probably shouldn't be publicly talking about this shit and I shouldn't be publicly denigrating yet again another company. But I mean, what the fuck, man? Let's just leave it there. So anyway, yeah, big been a been a real fun week dealing with all of that. It's been really cool, and uh, yeah, so it's a total loss basically, Captain. They're gonna they're gonna try to give me five bucks, basically. They're gonna come they're gonna come out here. They're gonna start taking pictures. They're gonna start doing, th and they're gonna be like, mm, "How's five dollars sound?" They're gonna give me five fucking dollars for this car. This is the first car that I bought, but I've been driving this car for like 12 years. I love this car. Okay? Now, I'm the kind of guy that if it ain't broke, don't fix it. But even if it is broke, like, you probably don't really have to fix it. You know what I mean? You guys know what I'm saying. You know what I'm saying. Right? 12 years, bro, it's a total loss. You don't know what you're talking about. You didn't even look at the car. What car? I don't know if I feel super comfortable talking about, like, the make and model because, like, one of you guys is, like, trying to triangulate fucking, you know, the longitude and latitude. 
Uh, when I got on wreck almost two weeks ago, they give me a ton for it, but it was definitely totaled. Well, there you go. What's the VIN? Yeah, how about the VIN, social? I'll get, you know, what else? you want the blood type, DNA mapping, some shit like that. Uh, Brandon Voss, welcome back to the Nerd Ventures, baby! Who's your insurance agent? Yeah, no, I, yeah, we'll go through. Uh, Car's value, probably four to five. Damage, going to be two to three. Yeah, well, then fix it. Hello? Then just fix it. Vin is public information anyway. Not mine. Mine's super secret. How about that? How about that? You think they know the Vin of the Batmobile? Yeah, I don't think so. Uh, and while you're at it, a MIDI count. Yeah, yeah, for sure. That isn't how that works, Josh. You don't you don't know things. This is Jake, total loss. Oh, from State Farm? Right on, bro. Thanks. No oil equal engine done. No, just patch it up. Just give it a patch. Throw, throw a little duct tape on that thing, man. You know what I mean? Jeez. The other thing that's irritating is I've been putting a steady grand or two into it for these last couple of years, right? So I've got, like, lifetime warranties on all my brakes, all my axles, all kind. Dude, I've been like, it's a Volkswagen, okay? I'll just tell you that. It's a Volkswagen. It'll go forever. Sprechen Sie Deutsch. Smash Bro, welcome to the Nerd Ventures, baby. Are you feeling the power immediately? Are you feeling the power immediately of joining the greatest community on the internet? Because you should be. On top of that, you are now automatically entered to win this $200 GameStop gift card, sir. And I hope you win it. Smash Bro! I hope Smash Bro. In fact, let's just let's 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 pull for it right now. Let's see who won it. Oh shit, it's Smash Bro. Who would have thought? $200 GameStop gift card. Okay, seriously though. It later on in the stream, we're going to do a drawing for the $200 GameStop gift card. It goes out to a lucky member each month. You can become a member here on YouTube. You can become a member on Twitch. You can become a member on both. And you get two entries in to win the $200 GameStop gift card. So you should check it out. Do it. And we're going to be drawing this later on in the stream. So you still got time. Ah. <sighs> Josh, I'm a Nigerian prince. Please give me your debit card information so I can deposit 20000 into your account for the car. Perfect, man. Hit me up. Send me an email with that in the subject uh, line. Nolan Gab Gabal Gabal Gabaldon? Gabaldon? That's a that's a very cool name, but I don't know how to pronounce it. I was successful in drawing an elk hunt this year in New Mexico, so I hope I can tag one and bag one to fill the freezer this year with some meat. Can't wait to get my hands on that unity. That sounds awesome, man. I've never had elk. I wonder how it is. Darboy, baby, welcome to the Nerd Vengers. Let's go. How is elk? Never had it. Is it pretty gamey? Is it pretty chill? You would imagine it would have to be pretty gamey, but I bet the loins are still pretty good. It's delicious. Can't wait to get my hands on nudity. Wait, what? Uh, it's about time. Hell yeah, Darboid. It's about time. It's pretty lean. Yeah. <laughs> What's your address so I know where to send the insurance check? Uh, just uh, we'll handle that in the DMs, man. We'll handle that in the DMs. Just, just we'll get it to you in the DMs. So, Josh, wait, what? What's Adam saying? Probably some bull crap. Uh, Josh just mad. He's gonna buy a minivan now. God damn it, Adam. Should I get a minivan, guys? I probably should. Look, here's the thing. We can't fit Liam and the dogs at the same time in my car. It's impossible. The The dogs are wild. And Liam's just, you know, you guys saw him yesterday. He's a big old boy. He is a big old boy. Get a 1984 Dodge Caravan. Maybe that's the move, huh? A forerunner. It's a tank. Uh, you're better. You you're better. A small SUV, unless you're planning on having a second kid. 
I mean, yeah, eventually we're, we're thinking about doing that. Josh, are you really doing it? Suffer through Rebel Moon too? Well, who says I'm suffering, Agent Lama? Sheesh, coming with the heat right away, chat. Should we talk about Rebel Moon too? Should we talk about Rebel Moon too? Um, y'all gonna watch it? I'm gonna watch it. Y'all gonna watch it? It came out last night, right? Last night at midnight? Pass? No way. Throw a one into the chat if you're at least going to give it a chance. Hey, there's a couple ones. Hey, see, there you go. There you go, man. I, for a second, there, I didn't see any ones, and I was just like, oh, boy. Okay, yeah, Rebel Moon, it's kind of a tough one, right? I mean, you guys kind of gassed it up a lot. Um, you know, you guys were saying some wild shit about, like, the next Star Wars, this, that, second, and the third. So, you know, I don't, I don't blame you, you know? I like Zack, too. But, uh, damn. Damn. It's a real, no, in all seriousness, it's a really tough one. It's, it's one of the more embarrassing, uh, things I've had to sort of deal with in my streaming YouTube career. Uh, because, dude. <laughs> Like I couldn't, I couldn't believe it. And I was like sitting there and I put it on, you know, I faked a migraine to get out of a watch party with you guys and shit. And then like, I'm sitting there, I'm watching it. Uh, and I couldn't believe how much I personally did not enjoy that movie. Like I really didn't like that movie, bro. I tried it again. I watched it again. I think I watched most of it again. I don't think I watched the whole thing again. But, uh, yo, like it's, it's pretty bad. I think it's like uniquely bad to the point where like, I, I have a lot of questions for Zach specifically. I'm just like, I don't really get it. Um, but, uh, I knew some people back in when it was first coming out. There were some people I knew that had seen both parts, and they said the part two is way better. It's like crazy good. It's going to change the whole conversation around Rebel Moon. Um, so we'll see, man. You know, we'll see. Uh, yeah, so I'm probably going to watch it later tonight. It has a 13% on Rotten Tomatoes. Yeah, but it's only like eight or ten people, right, that have reviewed it. So, nah, that's how bad Rebel Moon was. Wait, what? People are saying it's shit. Look, I, I'm just telling you what I heard before. I don't know. 23 reviews. Man, I got to tell you, I, when you guys are trying to prove me wrong, you guys are really like Johnny on the spot. Like, you got the numbers. You got the fucking cross references. You got what everybody's saying. Like, you guys are ready to go. If you put half as much effort into something else as you did trying to prove me wrong. Uh, by the way, we figured out what was what's going on with the music. And we figured out uh, something kind of crazy when we were streaming on Twitch yesterday. So... Where's the chat on Twitch, by the way? I'm trying to I'm trying to watch. We got we got 15 over on Twitch. Hell yeah. Wakey Bakey Sama gifted another sub. I'm trying to I'm trying to keep it all. Is there a way I can pop out the chat on Twitch and kind of have them all kind of going? That'll be cool. I know Ryan's over there taking care of a lot of stuff too, so that's nice. Um okay, so you know how like the music keeps going out? On streams. Well, so I have 64 gigabits. 
of uh, RAM. I've got a a 32 and a 32, like DDR4, like really good RAM, right? Um, well, a while ago, I want to say this was like four months ago, the dogs were in here and they got behind some of the corn, uh, the cords, and my tower slammed down. And I was like, oh, shit, and thank God, like, everything was okay. Well, the other day I noticed that the DDR RAM, the RAM, only one of them was lit. Okay? And I was like, what the fuck? So basically just figured out that I'm missing half my RAM, so I got to go out and get more RAM this weekend. DDR4 is old. Not the Dance Dance Revolution 4. Not that. Yeah, yeah. So that's why the some stuff has not been going super great on the streams and whatnot. No, it's busted. I don't know exactly what the problem is. I hope it's not something with the fucking uh, motherboard there. Oh, that would really suck. But uh, either way, you got to get it figured out. So, yeah, I'm going to probably go check that out later today. It's because we were... Uh, 30 gigs isn't enough? Hell no, nah, bro. We need that 64. Exactly. The fucking gnomes. Exactly. Um, The motherboard? Well, because if there's a problem with the motherboard where it goes in, then it's more than the RAM. I got to make sure the RAM, and maybe I'll switch them up and see if the one RAM goes in the other RAM, and if it lights up, then it's not the RAM. It's the motherboard. And also, somebody, Danny Cummings. Danny! Danny! With a five spot, man, says, isn't there a director's cut or like a longer unrated version? I thought Zach said so in the Joe Rogan podcast. Yeah, no, that's absolutely a thing. Get the DDR5, long live the den of daredevils. God damn it. Um, yeah, so I think that's, that's Zach's strategy, right, is to get... Uh, You know what I heard too, and I and I wonder if this is real, but he said his cuts are like completely different movies where he doesn't even use the same takes. So even the scenes we've seen will not be the ones like the takes that he took to edit together the first movie. And I gotta tell you, that's that's a wild strategy. Like, what was he doing? Being like that's the take for my shit, not the first shit. You know what I mean? Like, come on, man. That's, I'm sorry. That does not, like, did you think that through? <laughs> yeah, the reason these Rebel Moon movies are getting shit on is because I gave all the second, third, and fourth best takes for all of those. It's like, oh boy, man. Oh boy, man. So I'm gonna give it a shot. Um, I love Zach. I'll probably still watch the um extended cuts of Rebel Moon and stuff like that. But I mean, look, as a fan, I'm like, there's a part of me that's really trying to like cope for Zach and like cope for the whole thing. As a person that does what I do as far as like content and like understanding fans and just reading the fucking room. Bro, it's Jover. Like, I'm sorry. It just is. For Rebel Moon, it's Jover. Um, Rebel Moon will just be that kind of weird thing Zach tried that one time. And I hope that uh, he goes on to do other stuff and, and you know, continues to, like, do his thing. Because it's not... It, it had a... I think it had a chance to do something culturally and it's just not going to like I, I see no path forward for rebel moon becoming a big thing you know it'll just be like a niche little thing that Zack snyder fans might go crazy for uh, but then again i'm a big Zack snyder fan and i i thought the first one was pretty terrible yeah uh Michael, the nobody phantom, says, I'm waiting for the director's cut. It's like Gunn saying DC will get rebooted and then wondering why the next movie performs bad. Why watch if they don't matter? 
I don't. I mean, I understand the point you're making. I don't think that's really what's going on. I think Rebel Moon was really fucking bad, dude. Like, I think it was a really bad movie. Like, there was a lot of stuff in that movie that I just I could not believe I was watching it. Like, I could not believe what I was watching. It's very bad, in my opinion. Right? And a lot of people, a lot of people seem to agree, man. C.L. Mooney, welcome to the Nerdvengers, baby. Do you feel that power rising up in your loins? <coughs> I went a little too hard with that one. Like, how bad? It's pretty fucking bad, bro. What do I think of Transformers 1? I think it looks worse than Rebel Moon. I'm going to be honest. What did you guys think of uh, Transformers 1? I thought that... Sh I think it looks awful. <laughs> looks cool? Really? I think it looks horrible. Uh, Den of Nerds, what happens when Superman, the new movie, flops? Are they going to bring Zack back or something? I doubt it. <laughs> if James Gunn's Superman movie bombs, they need a little break, and they need, like, some kind of fresh take on it, man. You know? I like what I saw. Big Transformers fan, by the way. That's cool. Is anybody else feeling it? Looks like a good kids movie. Yeah, I guess. Uh, nah, it looks better than Rebel Moon. What? Nah, man. I, I Look, I'm just being honest. I thought that trailer was awful. Awful. Hate the design. Hate the acting. Hate the premise. Hate, 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 hate. Ugh. Ugh. I think visually it looks good. Really? I hated the way it looked. It looked like this weird... It, like, it doesn't look photorealistic at all to me. It looks like this... I don't know how to describe it, dude. Ugh. Ugh. Uh, it looked like bad action figures from the 80s. Dude, the 80s movies were sick, though. Go back and look at that movie with Unicron. I think it was like in 87. Go back and look at those... That animation, dude. That shit was mind-blowing. <clears throat> is this a movie with Chris Hemsworth in it? I believe so. Yeah, I believe so. Uh, trailer might not be the best, but the clip shown at CinemaCon said to be more serious. I think the animation will grow uh, on like people over time. Maybe. It's possible. Visuals were good except the characters. Mm, I thought it all looked like pretty shitty, to be honest. Mm. I can't believe they made such a big thing about the trailer by release to get in space. Like it was supposed to be some monumental thing. Yeah, I mean, that's one of those things where it's like, yo, shout out to marketing, but also you can't really, I mean, you could polish a turd, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, y'all ever seen a horseshit trailer from a soulless corporation trying to cash in on your nostalgic feelings of the past? Have you ever seen it? In space. <laughs> like that's what we're, that's, that's how I feel about it. Darth Shibby says the voice of Optimus throws me off. I don't think he got the ability to transform his balls to drop yet. Hope you're doing well. Shibby, I hope you are doing well. It's good to see you. Dar Boyd says with the $10... Uh, that's very generous, man. Thank you. Says, what's up? Long time broke, Venger. But now I can get in on some of the other streams. Can't wait to check out more than the Tower Lobby. Oh, hell yeah. What's the next member stream and how do I get in? The next member stream will be next Wednesday night. And uh, we actually have homework. So welcome, welcome. And it's cool. And I appreciate the support. But now you have fucking homework and you better do it. You have to read Kingdom Come. And All-Star Superman. We're wrapping up our deep dive on Superman. And so we're going to be uh, talking about those comics next week. So congratulations. Thank you for the love and support. And now you have homework. 
<clears throat> that would be like releasing a Rebel Moon trailer in space. It's not a bad idea. Uh, no, you don't. Josh does the homework for us. You don't say that, Cole. Hold up. I just bought All Star Superman. Nice. It's a great book. It's a great book. I'm, I'm uh, looking forward to checking that out again. I'll probably uh, reread it over the weekend. It's real good. Damn it on a Friday. Yeah, so uh, just a little like show notes or like what we're getting into today. We got a, guys, we have a ton of Marvel updates. Everybody and their mother has been talking about the updates for Marvel Studios. Look, some of this stuff is awesome. Some of this stuff is sending me. Some of this stuff I don't understand. I'm just trying to be a fan. I don't understand why it's being made difficult for me. What is happening? I'm kind of pissed about one thing in particular. So we're going to be breaking that down. There's a shit ton of stuff to go over. I thought later in the stream, it might be cool to read some of the Marvel manga. Marvel is releasing some mangas on the Viz app. I think it's kind of cool. It would be kind of fun to uh, read some manga. Um, I have down here complain more about the custodies. I could do that. Uh, Fallout Season 2 is a thing. We could talk about that. Star Wars ain't making no money. So Kathleen Kennedy's going to start stealing your lunch money. Um, we could talk about that. There's a, there's a bunch of stuff we could talk about. Bunch of stuff we could talk about. Marvel manga. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Which I think is brilliant. I think it's a really good idea. I'm glad they're doing it. And I read a little bit of the Wolverine one. It seems super stylized. It's kind of interesting. Um... So maybe we could read a couple of those issues together. That'd be kind of fun. Be kind of chill. Uh, yeah, let's talk about it all. What's happening with Norrin Rad? Ah, fuck. Uh, I mean, we'll get into it. We'll get into it in just a second here. I just, I'm not fully awake yet. My mind is still all over the place. So let me, uh, let me just sip on this coffee a little bit more, and then we're gonna get into uh, the Marvel stuff. I'm ignorant about this. Can you explain what manga is? Yeah, manga is just Japanese comic books. That's all it is. And there are some people that will try to tell you that's not what it is, and they're wrong. It is Japanese comic books. Now, there's some things that make a lot of manga very different from a lot of stuff you read in the West for Western comic books. Uh, but that's what they are. They're called manhwa in Korea. They're called manga in Japan. Um, so that's what they are. <clears throat> so if you've ever watched any anime, like, you know, One Piece, Dragon Ball, Jujutsu Kaisen. If you've ever watched any anime, it's very likely that it is adapted from a Japanese comic. called ma from manga you know what i mean so yeah i i enjoy reading manga so like some of my favorite so i really like berserk i really like akira these are some of my favorite comics i've ever read um and those are done by some of the great greatest uh japanese comic book artists of course akira toriyama and dragon ball brilliant <clears throat> Yeah, it's good stuff. Don't make me one piece, you. What's a comic book? Jesus. Uh, or you could just talk about how dope Rebel Moon 2 is. I haven't seen it. It might be dope. It could be incredible. I just don't know. Are you still watching One Piece? Yeah, but like we kind of bounce around. There's like a lot of stuff that we've been so, or watching. So... Over the past couple of nights, we watched something that's absolutely legendary, great anime movie, Street Fighter 2. If you have not seen 
Street Fighter 2, the anime movie. Oh my god, bro. You have to. It's so good. It's so good. And uh Bison is amazing in it. So cool, man. Yeah, yeah, Street Fighter anime. The first one's really good too, but the second one is like damn. Really good. Um, I haven't watched Helsing. I mean, I think I've watched a little bit of Helsing, but I haven't really watched it. Uh, do you prefer the live action or anime as far as from One Piece? I mean, I like both, maybe just in for different reasons. I mean, the one thing that kind of blew me away about the One Piece anime was just how much heart it has. And then t when you get into the Alabasta saga, I was like, damn, there's actually some really like good layered writing that's going on here, which is, you know, you know, because in Shogun, you don't always get that, right? But I thought it was really good. The Skypea arc is a little like, uh, but I've heard the next one's really good. So I'm excited for that. But the, the live action, uh, <clears throat> the live action One Piece is great dude it's so good how different are the characters in the anime versus live action i would say the core of the characters is pretty well intact there's some stuff that gets lost there's some stuff that gets developed over a long period of time that the show kind of rushes but generally it's all the same the the real heart of it is uh luffy the guy that plays luffy he like perfectly embodies luffy it's a, it's kind of wild never lose your nerd says going back and forth uh, from YouTube and here. Well, I appreciate it, man. Thanks. Thanks for the support. Let's talk about Pokemon. Pokemon's cool. Uh, Skypea, dope AF. You become love it after a few arcs of learning about how the Void Century. I know there's a lot of cool stuff that has to do with development because of, like, you know, the lost history of the world and shit like that. But, um... Yeah, it's just, it's definitely, for me, not as good as, um, it is not as good as the Alabasta arc, which I thought was really cool. It's really, really tight. So, <clears throat> All right, let me have a couple more sips of coffee, then we'll start with the big Marvel news. There's a ton of stuff we got to break down, uh, and then we will get into some other stuff. Did I see Godzilla vs. Kong? Hell yeah, I like that, dude. I thought Godzilla X Kong New Empire was dope. It was really cool. Nah, I start with Warhammer today. Well, here's what I'll tell you about Warhammer. I left the subreddit. I left the subreddit. I'm actually like kind of close to selling my custodies army. I'm like that disappointed. And it's not just with GW, but it's with the fans too, man. Like the the people on the subreddit. Oh my god. I don't want to get into it too much, but it's all it's so much of this kind of energy. Of guys, I understand you're frustrated, but can you just stop? You're you're making it worse. You're ruining this for everybody. As if people are just acting a fool for no fucking reason. Like, could it possibly be that GW is fucking up and a bunch of people are super pissed about it? Could that possibly be the case? So, I left the subreddit, man. I'm fucking done with that. I don't want to talk. It makes me embarrassed to be a Custodes player. Like, real talk. I'm like, Jesus. This is what it is. These are my fellow custodians. And this won't make a ton of sense to to, to basically any of you. But um, I'm thinking about going to Chaos. So I play all Imperium stuff. And I'm like all about like the Imperium, like the God Emperor and all this. I'm like, hell yeah. And my buddy, like my best friend, he plays Chaos Demons. That's his army. I got to tell you, the way shit's been going, I'll sell all my Dark Angels. I'll sell all my Custodes. Maybe it's time. Maybe I'm a Chaos player now. 
You know what I mean? I don't know, bro. I'm I'm very, very, very frustrated as a Warhammer fan. I'm frustrated with the fan base. I'm frustrated with the company. It's just a bunch of bullshit. Why did this have to happen? Why did it ha have to happen? Actually, Necrons could be really cool. Necrons could be cool. I do like the Necrons. All right. One last thing, and I'm going to let this go. The audacity of these people on Reddit telling people like me that have spent thousands of dollars on their their armies. Thousands. The audacity of these people to be like, bro, you're overreacting, bro. You're, you're, you're being really toxic right now. Why are you disliking videos? Like, can we fucking stop? Fuck you. Fuck you. I feel like Elon Musk when he was like super triggered at like Bob Iger and all that shit. Go fuck yourself. That's what I feel like. Fuck you. Oh, you spent thousands of dollars, years of your life investing in this thing. And a, and a, and a corporation changes it on a whim. Doesn't explain shit. Then calls you toxic for questioning it, and I'm the asshole? Fuck you, bro. Fuck you. Fuck out of here. My thousands of dollars, not as good as your thousands of dollars, because you just chilling? Oh, my God, bro. Disgusting. All right, anyway, why do you reaction to Warhammer but not Star Wars? Uh, you, clarify what you're talking about, man, because I don't know if you – maybe you're new here, but I have I've spoken about Star Wars a couple of times, just a few times. I have uh, I, I have also been frustrated with uh, Star Wars, just a, just a couple of times, just a, just a few times here and there. So I don't know what you're talking about, bro. <clears throat> okay. Shall we begin? Shall we begin? Let me get this set up. Hang on. Hang on, everybody. Also got to wake up a little bit. Brutal Bear uh, says, was F SF2 anime the one where Ken is driving the red sports car, Alice in Chains, down a canopied road? Much love, brother. Yeah, that's the one. That's the one, and it was, it's so good. It's so good. Okay. Pause music. Pause music. Let's, let's, let's do it. Let's get into it. Let's make some magic. All right, so we got a ton of Marvel updates. A whole bunch of people, man. Uh, we had a drop from Production Weekly. There's actually several things we have to get into with that. Daniel RPK was dropping some stuff. A lot of stuff to get into with that. Alex P uh, kind of chiming in a little bit too. Jeff Snyder. So we've had like several big insiders and scoopers dropping all sorts of information when it comes to what Marvel is doing. Now, I probably don't have to tell you guys this, but I uh, I fucking will. Um, Marvel in a shaky spot. Not on the most secure of grounds. A lot of fans questioning what will actually be happening with Marvel. Are they going to be able to turn this stuff around? Are they spending a bajillion dollars on Captain America 4 and it's still just not going to be good? These are the questions that we have. So let's get into this and let's begin with the production weekly updates. Okay. This is pretty interesting stuff. And just so you know, too, production weekly, very reliable, comes from sort of the uh, industry people, people that are in the industry, very, very reliable. Not to say this is all ironclad information and this is the way it is, but uh, it's a very good source. So we're going to talk about it. Okay. 
So first up, they say, Avengers 5 is set to begin filming in Q1 2025 in the UK under the working title Apple Pie 1. First question for chat. What do you think Avengers 6 is going to be called? It's a softball, but guys, wake up. What? Come, come on. What do you think Avengers 6 is going to be called? Anybody? Bueller? Bueller? Anybody? Cherry Pie 69. 100%. 10 points to Gryffindor. Okay, so let's just stop for a second and go over this. Um, number one, important to remark that it is called Avengers 5 still. Some people still report on this thing as though it is called the Kang Dynasty. A lot of evidence that it is not the Kang Dynasty, bro. So, yeah, it's not the Kang Dynasty. Interesting that it's shooting in Q1 2025. Um, if you've been following along closely, you'll know that Daniel had reported earlier that this movie was supposed to film this year. It got pushed into next year. This is because of changes being made to Apple Pie 1 and to Cherry Pie 69 because they're reconceptualizing how these movies are going together. I think a lot more Secret Wars stuff coming into Avengers 5. The fact that they're calling it Apple Pie 1 implies that there's an apple pie too, right? So so we more or less know that this is Secret Wars Part 1 and Secret Wars Part 2. I personally still believe that a lot of what was going to be in the Kang Dynasty is now going to be in Shang-Chi 2, okay? Shang-Chi 2 has Destin Daniel Crichton as the director. He was going to be the director of the Kang Dynasty. That's not happening anymore. So... I, you know, we don't know that for sure, but that's just kind of where I'm at with it. I think that is the thing that's going to happen, okay? Next up, and this is kind of interesting, Armor Wars begins filming in 2025 in the UK. Interesting. Uh, Dominic Thorne and Walter Goggins are not included in the listing, even though they had been included before. Now, let's stop and talk about that for a second. Um, I guess pour one out for Dominic Thorne and Walter Goggins. Now, to me, I think this means potentially going away from some Kang connection stuff because I believe Dominic Thorne was originally going to have a strong connection to the Kang character, and so I'm actually super happy to see her removed from this movie. Not because I have anything personally against her, but because... What I heard was so stupid. I was like, please, for the love of Jeebus, do not do that. And so I'm taking that as a good sign that she's not in there. And maybe they're just going away from that character in general because who cares? Walter Goggins. That's kind of a shame. He's blowing up right now. Uh, Fallout. He absolutely crushed it in Fallout. He's cool. But also could potentially hint to them taking it in a very, very different direction. Um... I don't know what to expect for this movie now because Rhodey was a scroll for so long. Another, what what I consider to be pretty stupid, foolish thing that Marvel Studios has done. A lot of that going around lately. But we'll see how they take the actual Rhodey and have him sort of cope with everything that has happened, everything that he has missed out on. And we'll see how this is all going to fit together. Now, there's a lot of speculation that um, Tony Stark, our DJ, will be back for this movie in some way, shape, or form. I believe that. I think it's going to happen. I think you're going to get a lot of our DJ in the next five to six years. Some of you don't like it, um, but, you know, you, you, you got to eat your meat if you want to have your pudding. Okay, Shang-Chi 2 starts filming March 2025 in the UK. Interesting that it's shooting in the UK. This is actually something... We didn't talk about this, but this came out, I think, last week, maybe the week before. Marvel Studios has signed a big deal. They're going to be filming a lot more of their stuff in the UK as opposed to Atlanta. This is kind of a long time coming. There's a lot of reasons why. Um, but not to be that guy, but that account, Atlanta Filmmaking, that dude is a total prick. Um, so I guess pack your bags and move to the UK or shut the fuck up forever. Moving on, X-Men begins filming in Q4 2025 in the UK again. You're starting to see the pattern here, okay? Now, this one's kind of interesting. Charles Xavier's team of Merry Mutants 
is charged with the mission of protecting a world that hates and fears them for their unusual appearances and abilities. So what does that mean? That's that's kind of wild. It, it would imply to me, and I wonder what you guys think, Chet. This implies to me they're going in a traditional way with the X-Men. And maybe it took some non-traditional failures over the past couple of years to get Marvel to understand this. Perhaps X-Men 97 is also a part of how they figured it out. Because uh, X-Men 97 is dope. Like Variety just said it's probably going to win an Emmy. I think it should win all the Emmys. And they should make a new category for new show that is somehow better than Invincible. And I think it's got that Emmy locked up as well. So that's kind of cool. It, you know, you could read very far into this and say, oh, shit, like we're getting traditional X-Men. Let's go. I'm excited about that. You could also just say, I mean, what other log line? <laughs> like, Charles Xavier hates his team. They're not merry. They're inhumans now. And they hate and fear a world that loves them for their unusual. Opinion. You see what I mean? So it's like. I'm choosing to believe this means probably traditional X-Men stuff. We'll wait and see. I'm not really sure, but but it seems cool. Now, uh, Vision Quest begins filming in Q4 2024 in the UK. Elizabeth Olsen is listed in the cast. So once again, UK. Elizabeth Olsen. Man, this is kind of fun. Uh, throw a one into the chat if you care about Vision Quest. It's cool if you do. It's all good if you do. Uh, I, I don't care about Vision Quest. In any way, shape, or form, I'm super frustrated that there's a whole corner of the MCU, which appears to be spinoffs of spinoffs of spinoffs. I really, 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 really don't care. However, Feige, you got me again, man. You got me again, you old sly motherfucker, because I love Elizabeth Olsen. Very special place in my heart. I love love Elizabeth Olsen, love Wanda, love the Scarlet Witch. So, uh, yeah, they probably got me on that one. That's a good move. Spider-Man 4 starts filming late September 2024 in the UK. Again, release date is listed as July 10th, 2026. McKenna and Somers returning as writers. Okay. Now, there's more stuff to talk about with regards to Spider-Man 4. And we'll just kind of move right into the next part because uh, Daniel RPK also chimed in on some of this stuff. Uh, so we will talk about that now. Okay. So first up, he says Avengers 5 is filming next year in the UK and it will keep its release date May 1st, 2026. That's good news, man. And I told you guys, like, I don't think it's getting pushed again. Some other people like Alex Perez and some others thought, oh, it's going to get pushed. It's going to, you know, I don't think so. It's hitting that release date. And I think they've been working really hard on, you know, how they're going to approach this thing. Uh, so that's cool. But he's kind of mimicking, you know, the other report. So nothing new there. Okay. Now, Norrin Rad will appear in the Fantastic Four. Now, this one is super triggering for me. I'm super upset about this one. And you might be like, but wait, why, Josh? I thought all you wanted in life was Norrin Rad in the Fantastic Four. I thought the whole reason you were so butt hurt is because you wanted Norrin Rad in the Fantastic Four. Okay. Wait. Resident Justice says Daniel RPK said that the Norrin Rad thing isn't true and that he never said that. What part? This one? Or the other one? Because him being in the movie is a good thing. What he said afterwards, not a good thing. So what are you guys talking about? What did he bedunk? Okay. So let me just tell you what I saw. We'll put take this with a grain of salt. And by the way, I hope this is wrong. I hope this is wrong. Okay. What I heard was that it's it's not going to be Norrin Rad is the Silver Surfer and he's going to be hanging out with Shalabao Silver Surfer. He said that Norrin Rad 
is going to stay on the planet and Shalabal will be the one to make the sacrifice, okay? And that is beyond triggering for me. And part of me thinks maybe it's not true because Daniel just likes the troll. Like, I'm pretty sure he's like a hater, you know, kind of like a chronically online hater. Um, And so part of this could be him literally just trying to trigger me. And I got to say, uh, good, good on you, Bob's your uncle. Fantastic job because I am f- fucking furious about this. It's one thing to do shallow bow. It's one thing to do a female server, which, by the way, both of those things suck. Both of those things suck. But on top of that, if you're literally going to have the character that I love, Norrin Rad, in the Fantastic Four, and he's not the one to make the sacrifice, he's not the one, then, then you're literally taking his arc and just giving it to Shalabal. That is bullshit. Okay? So, uh, we're, I'm trying to be chill because we don't know what it actually will look like. I don't necessarily trust Daniel. But if this is true, like... Like, I'm again, this is one of those situations where everything gets all funky, right? Because I don't, I like Marvel. I'm actually trying to actually ride with Marvel, right? Like, I, I, I don't know. Did you guys notice I really fucking like Marvel? You know, I really like Marvel. I'm really trying to, 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 to ride with them and, and talk about how it could turn around. Marvel could be making good decisions and stuff like that. I got to tell you. If this is real and there's no explanation for it and they're just like, yeah, we thought we'd fuck up this fan favorite version of the Silver Surfer that's the most commonly known version and just give it to his girlfriend. Ah, I don't know, man. I just got to tell you, I will probably not have a super mature, healthy reaction to that because that's the worst possible scenario it's called a multiverse it's called a multi bullshit like yo here's here's some here's an interesting thought for you funky foo if there's a multiverse out there and we've got multiverses like this or universes like this then they fucking suck and they should be destroyed i'm i'm team kang i'm team king thanos i'm team beyonder i don't give a shit fuck that destroy it Burn it to the ground. Destroy it. Thanos was right. I Like, I got to tell you, man, I'm feeling kind of caged in right now. I'm feeling kind of caged in right now. I'm trying to be chill. My God, Ringo, I'm trying to be the shepherd. I really am. I'm trying here. Why do you guys just basically keep... Putting up big fucking signs that say, I do not value you as a fan. I do not value you as a consumer. Like, what the actual ever-loving fuck are you thinking? That is the dumbest, and I hope they get dragged over the coals. If it's true, mind you. If it's true. I hope they get dragged over the coals. That's the stupidest shit I have ever heard in my fucking life. And I have heard some real stupid shit. Holy fuck. Okay, anyways, moving on. We'll see how that goes. Uh, Blade will now take place in the present day and will tie into Midnight Suns. Oh, okay. That's kind of interesting. Uh, Mia Goth is still set to play Lilith. And will be the main villain. Filming will begin in the UK later this year. Okay, so there's actually some other updates about Blade. We're going to talk about Blade in just a little bit here, okay? Um, That's kind of interesting. Seems they're moving ahead with Blade. Spoiler alert for something that Snyder said. It seems like they finally just made it Blade vs. Vampires. And again...
Really? 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 So no more time bullshit. No more my daughter's blood. Let's set 13 strong female characters in this fucking movie. No more of that bullshit. You're going to put a fucking katana in his hand and have him cut up vampires? Who would have thought? Great idea. What a fucking concept. Okay, anyway, so that's good. Um, Vin, Viv and Vin Vision will appear in Vision Quest. All right. Okay. Um, now, couple, couple, couple of things. Cu- couple of things. Okay, before we get into... Uh, uh Snyder and his comments. A uh, couple of things. Uh you're getting a lot of like insiders kind of chiming in about this shit. And you know, Alex Perez has been teasing some kind of connection between Mephisto and Lilith. I mean, that sounds cool. That sounds cool. Uh in a year from now, he'll be telling us to cool our jets and curb our expectations and calling us weird for getting over excited about these things but but it is interesting um kind of claiming that Lilith commands an army of vampires that's dope again like fucking vampires and blade who would have thought what a concept um so that's kind of that's kind of the deal on that now let's pull up uh what uh Jeff Snyder is saying about all of this I will look at the RPK stuff in a little bit here okay Number of different things here coming from Jeff. First up, he says hasn't heard anything regarding Fantastic Four having two silver surfers. That kind of implies that this bullshit we're hearing about with Shallow Bow and uh, Norrin Rad could be true. My God, don't do it. Uh, next up, Jeff said his sources said to bet against Sam Raimi possibly directing MCU Spider-Man 4. That's kind of interesting. Um, I wonder where that story comes from, why it picked up steam. Uh, but yeah, that's that's kind of wild. You know, maybe he will be the guy that's going to end up doing Avengers 6 or something like that. Who knows? Jeff says the early word for Deadpool and Wolverine is really good. While Captain America Brave New Order World Time Travel nonsense hasn't been as kind. Okay, so let's stop for a second here on that one. Um, Deadpool Wolverine is really good. Has anybody surprised about that? I'm not surprised about that. Are you surprised about that? I'm I'm not surprised about that. Captain America Brave New World, uh, people haven't been as kind. That kind of sucks to hear. That kind of sucks to hear because uh, they're spending oodles of money on this thing. Obviously not on the wig for Harrison Ford, but they are spending a lot of money on it. And they're gassing it up, man, comparing it to the Winter Soldier. Um, You know, I said when that stuff sort of first broke, like, you can't just say that. Because if you keep doing that, like, if Marvel keeps doing that and they keep just, like, comparing it to the old shit and just say, it's, it's like the boy that cried wolf. I would really recommend not saying that unless you can live up to that movie. So, I don't know. I mean, who knows, too? This is all just kind of hearsay until... We get a little bit closer. Uh, But, dude, imagine they keep delaying Cap 4. They're spending so much money on it, and it ends up being mid. Oh, my God, bro. Like, you. (laughs) Marvel. Um, Okay. Blade is going to start shooting in Mexico this summer, and it has been stripped down to just Mahershala Ali killing vampires. Again, how... Is it possible it took us so long to get to blade fighting vampires? Who are these people you're hiring? What is happening over there, dude? Like, that's fucking crazy. What, 17 rewrites later, you've now decided blade should just fight vampires? My God! 
Not exactly uh, confidence-inspiring shit, right? So that kind of sucks, to be honest with you. Um, and yeah, so that's pretty much it. Now, what was some, somebody was telling me that they got the thing, the Daniel thing here. Uh, once again, I haven't said anything about Norrin Rad actually appearing or two Silver Surfers in uh, the Fantastic Four. So what the fuck is this then? Somebody just totally misinterprets his shit? I don't think so. I think he's walking it back because he's getting smoke. Like, how could it be the case? Like, let's click this. All right, we'll put a we'll put an asterisk on that one. I blocked Daniel on Twitter because I'm sick of his ass, so I I have no ability to like reach out to him or whatever. Um, maybe it's not true, and I gotta tell you, if I have to choose between Norrin Rad being in the movie and basically getting cucked by Shallow Bow as far as from a character perspective. Um, or no Norrin Rad, I'm going to take no Norrin Rad. Leave him off to the side. You don't have to ruin him um, to do this in the movie. So take that all with the grain of salt. You know what I mean? And we don't, we don't know for sure when it comes to that one. And I will tell you overall, overall, when it comes to this stuff, uh, a lot of this has me excited. A lot of it kind of has me questioning it. You know, we have to take into consideration who this is coming from. Um, I think Jeff tends to be uh, a grumpy old man. And so a lot of his takes are like, come on, Johnny. You know what I mean? So like, take that for what it is. Daniel, we have no idea who this person is. He tends to be pretty negative too. Um, so take it all with a grain of salt. Some of this I like. I mean, I like the fact that Secret Wars seems to be on track, or at least Avengers 5 seems to be on track to hit on that May 1st date in 2026. I think that's dope. Um, Blade finally fighting vampires. I think it's dope. It's crazy. It took so long to get here. But connecting it to Lilith, Mephisto, Midnight Suns. That's all brilliant. That's all really good ideas. Uh, bringing Scarlet Witch back. That's a good idea. Um, so, yeah. The, the traditional X-Men thing. Uh, that is a good idea. That makes me feel good as a fan. So, kind of a mixed bag here. But, uh, yeah, those are your updates as far as uh, a ton of different reports, scoops, and uh, insights for um, Marvel Studios and what they're doing. What do you think, chat? Let me know. What are your thoughts? What are your thoughts? What do you think, chat? Aaliyah says, IATSE and Teamsters might strike, hence the UK filming, along with tax breaks. Oh, that actually makes sense. Yeah, that makes sense. Uh, Lord Baratheon says, do you like Jeff Snyder? I don't know Jeff Snyder. I mean, I think Jeff, sometimes I find him to be funny. A lot of the time I find him to be kind of just like snarky and out of touch. Um, but yeah, I don't know. Tyler, welcome back to the Nerd Avengers, baby. So what was Blade gonna be doing? Um, yeah, that's a good question. <laughs> like, come on, man. Like, what were they gonna do with Blade, right? Like, what, what was the other version of the movie? Trying to talk it out. Uh, give me the Beyonder and Ultron 11 or whatever. Or what are we even doing here? Uh, yeah. Bo DeMeo, the sleeper savior of Marvel. Maybe. I feel like they need to hire him on everything. Just ghostwrite it. Hug it out? Yeah. I mean, look, I, I don't have anything personally against him. I don't think about Jeff a lot, to be honest. Um, but from what I've seen on the show, yeah, like, dude, let me just say it like this. I don't think I would do a show with uh, Jeff Snyder. You know what I mean? But I respect the fact that he's got sources and he, he tries to give us this information. I think that's cool. 
My lucky number is 13. Let's go. Happy to be here with everyone and hope everyone is having a great day. New job, not bad. Can't wait for tomorrow. That's good, man. That's good. Appreciate you. 13 months. Hell yeah. Uh, get a Marvel OnlyFans set up. Uh, sure. Just for you. Check out Hunter x Hunter. Yeah, I've heard it's good. Heard it's real good. Wait, wait who? Wait, hold on. Blade's going to rule with respect? Yeah. Yeah. Blade is black. A period piece done in a pool of a trigger. I don't... You're going to have to explain that better. Uh, I believe in Marvel, and I think we can get back. But... I'm going to shit all over it for an hour. I agree with your take, but damn. That was only like 20 minutes, dude. <laughs> that was only like 20 minutes. Let me, let me, do you, are you implying that I'm being unfair? By the way, I'm going to shut down gambling in a little bit. Nothing personal, but you know, I only like to do it for like an hour on the stream. So I'm going to shut that down. Do you guys think I was unfair? With these takes? Do you think I'm being unfair? Like, real talk. Do you think I'm being unfair? And that, a bit? How so? Because, like, here's the thing, man. I'm, like, really struggling with, like, what do you want me to do otherwise? Like, would you like it more if I tightened it up and tried to act with tact and tried to not upset anybody's feelings? You know what I mean? Like, you're being a little obtuse. Uh, I think when I think when a motherfucker calls you obtuse, that's the most obtuse shit I can imagine. Explain it. What do you mean by that? Uh, shut down gambling. I'm getting whooped since last Friday. Oh, hell yeah. Well, I'll leave it on just for you. Um, one twice of the same number. Let's go. Oh, hell yeah. I mean, I don't know what you want me to do. I love Marvel. But I have to call the shit we are hearing as I see it. I have to take it as it comes. Do you know what I mean? Like, I am legit. Like, that was mild on the uh, silver server thing compared to how I feel. Oh, my God, bro. I. That was me trying to be chill. Like, I am smiling. You know what I'm saying? Uh, I'm convinced all of these things happening or intentionally frustrate, disappoint us, aggravate and upset. Yeah, I think there is some of that. And I think Daniel does that. That's why I said, like, you got to, you got to kind of, you got to kind of take it with a grain of salt. Because Daniel has done that in the past. Uh, drop some nerd coin. I'll drop some, but then I'm going to shut off gambling. <laughs> okay, here's 10K. Boom. 10K! I'll give you just a moment and then I'm going to shut off gambling. So you can gamble away all your 10K. And then we'll talk about some other stuff. Uh... Tyler says, with a five spot, I really appreciate that, man. Thank you. Says, Josh, is X-Men 97 the common team in... Uh, what? CM2? Captain Marvel 2? Oh, okay. Yeah, I like uh, like the new Screen Crush video. Could be in so they don't need time reintroduction a new X-Men team. Um, I think what you're asking me is, when we see Beast uh, after the Marvels, is it possible that that is the X-Men 97 universe? And what I would tell you is, I don't think it's the X-Men 97 universe. But it's probably not that far away from it. I think what we're seeing with the X-Men, and this was in Multiverse of Madness, this was in the Captain Marvel or the Marvel's uh, post-credit scene, this is through 
uh, X-Men 97, I think Feige's trying to show us that in most of the multiverse, that's what the X-Men are like. So I don't think it's the exact same like timeline, but more or less, are they the same? Yeah, I'd probably agree with that. Probably agree with that. Hey, man, what's with all the Coke cans? Did you try to win a competition or something? Uh, Yeah, something like that. Uh, Look at all y'all rolling. Hot damn. Okay, I'm shutting it down. I'm shutting it down. That's enough. No mas. No mas. One more box. No. Uh, Beast have the ultimate shorts. What does that mean? I don't think he was wearing any shorts. Gambling is a sin. Is it really? Is it? What do you guys think? Is gambling a sin? Probably in certain religions it is, huh? Professor X would have killed Wanda easily if you understand his power well. Sadly, Disney doesn't care. Well, the thing is, he was not trying to kill Wanda, bro. So I think you're you're getting that part a little bit wrong. It's stupid. And being stupid is a sin. Oh, shit. I didn't know that. Not if I win. Aw, shit. Crossing the road is a gamble. Oh, wow. Uh, I only gamble on the UFC. There you go. Only if you lose. Damn. That's crazy. I have a gambling addiction, Josh. Please help me with some Nerdcoin. Well, what if I told you the way out of your addiction could just be one big win? That's a joke. Please, for the love of God. Uh, Thomas L. Knight says, someone help me with my Amazon Twitch memberships. What do you need help with, man? You just go over to uh, go over to Twitch. You click on our thing, and you say subscribe. Uh, and then you can subscribe via Prime. So that's how you do it. I'm addicted to Coke. Lots of sweet, sweet cans. Yeah, I got a few of those myself. 99% of gamblers quit right before winning big. Oh, fuck, bro. <laughs> You're not supposed to say shit like that. Bro, I did it 10 times. What What did you do 10 times? That thing? Can somebody help him out over there? I still can't believe you guys think I'm going too hard here. I can't believe you guys think I went too hard on Marvel. That's it. We're going to the polls. We're going to the polls right now. Ah! Did Josh go too hard on Marvel? You're not hard enough. More. Yeah, but depending on the length of the stream, I'd have to call a doctor, you know. You go harder on Star Wars, bro. Do I really? Do I really? Josh, I misworded that. I meant to say that Professor X could have killed her. Yeah, no, I agree with that. 100%, man. Only because you're letting a troll RPK get to you. Yeah, you're probably right. You're probably right. I love democracy. Star Wars deserves it mo, 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 more or mo. Is the X-Men movie going to be set in an alternate universe like Fantastic Four? I really hope not. I really hope not. Man, this Fantastic Four movie for me is just nothing but question. Like, I'm just not sure about that. You go ham on Star Wars more than Marvel. Do I really? Is my mom a mutant in the 838? Uh, yes. But not the kind of mutant you're thinking of. More like the Fallout kind. Chilling in a basement with a five spot. Appreciate you, bro. Says I'm much more concerned 
with how Norrin Rad is treated in the main universe rather than in a universe that, in my opinion, will be destroyed and them with it. You know what? I got to tell you, Chillin, that is a fair take. That is a reasonable take. And now allow me to argue against it and ignore it completely. <clears throat> Hang on. Oh, stretch out. Oh, stretch out a little bit. Oh, hang on. Okay, here's the thing. Fuck that, bro! Because they're doing the Fantastic Four movie! They're introducing us to the the MCU Fantastic Four movie. And, and it's like, it's counterintuitive to say, oh, the Fantastic Four is a big fucking deal, and yet also... It's a different universe. Don't worry about it. No! No! Astro Nutway gifted a membership. Thanks, man. Appreciate you. You don't go hard enough. Star Wars sucks. And there is no excuse for why X-Men 97 is so good and the MCU has blown since Endgame slash Infinity War. Yeah, I think that's a fair take. I think that's a fair take. Your YouTube streams faster than your Twitch? What? What does that mean? Why can't we gamble here, says NerdZecutive. Bro, I don't know. Uh, do we have to be subscribers to gamble here? No, I, I, I don't know. I haven't got that figured out. Uh, always let them get to him. People take his name and say stuff all the time. Uh-oh. Are they hate? They're hating on me over on Twitch, man. Y'all hating over on Twitch? What's going on? I thought we were cool. I thought we was chill, man. Uh, the Exodus says, alternate timeline choice is lazy. Am I wrong? It's not necessarily lazy. We have to see how it's implemented. I think technically it could make their job more difficult, which would imply like the opposite of lazy. I would almost say it's hubris. I would say thinking you could introduce the Fantastic Four in a separate universe and yet have the audience accept that they're going to be the Fantastic Four is like too cute or hubris. So I almost think it's like the opposite of what you're saying. Kane B says, expectations for SDCC. I think they're going to go hard, man. I think they're going to go hard on SDCC. And I'm really hoping we get some dope, awesome announcements. I'll be streaming it. I'm really excited for it. So, uh, yeah. Twitch audience is very progressive. That's why. If a chance Twitch going hard. So Twitch is where all the lefties hang out. Is that what you're telling me? They're just mad because they got two-minute ad coming up over on Twitch. Goddamn. Uh, it's 420 now. Well, 424 down under here. Yeah, 420 tomorrow, huh? Interesting. Hard and long. Hey, keep your pants on, Banshee Mayhem. Let's keep it PG in here. Vandolf the Black says, We want to get that sort of content we love, like X-Men 97. Content must reflect the source material. How else will people even care about comic books when we don't respect the material? Keep it up, bro. I 100% agree with you. I 100% agree with you. One of the biggest downfalls of Marvel was that during the Infinity Saga, they did all new, all different Marvel. And so you would go see Steve Rogers as Captain America in the movie. And then you'd go into a comic shop and Steve Rogers wasn't Captain America. You'd go see Tony Stark as Iron Man. You'd go into the shop and Tony Stark was not Iron Man. You'd see Thor. Odinson. Like the fucking Thor. And you'd go into the shop and he wasn't Thor. It was one of the stupidest things they ever did. Um, and I feel like if they would have just had the comics reflect what was happening in the on the movies, they would have had a lot more crossover there, but they didn't really do it. It's kind of funny, like, 
you look at what's going on with Fallout right now, and f- the Fallout show, I thought the Fallout show was fantastic. In fact, should we talk a little bit about the Fallout show and talk about how they're doing uh, season two? Here, let's talk a little Fallout, okay? Let's talk a little Fallout. I loved Fallout Season 1, and very, very good news. Amazon is making Season 2. Let me get this pulled up. Super cool. They're making it Season 2 of Fallout. And I think this is fantastic, man. It was a really good first season. Excited to see where it goes. But there's another layer here. There's another side of this that I think is really fascinating. It kind of has to do with the conversation we were just having about Marvel. Right now, Fallout 76, which is kind of like their MMO, it is has peak players, more players on there than have been for the past eight years. There are more people playing Fallout 4 or Fallout New Vegas on Steam than have been for years. And that's the way this sort of multimedia, transmedia situation is supposed to work. That's why you do this. It's funny because this was Disney's whole thing. Like, this was their whole thing. The reason they bought these big brands is because they were like, we can use the movie studio and the production that we have to further the reach of the IP to then be able to make money in like several different ways down the pipeline of the IP. The Fallout show is doing that. But that's not happening for Star Wars. I don't even think that's happening with Marvel. I mean, it could be with the X-Men, because I think X-Men 97 is popping off in a way that kind of surprised a lot of us. And so you could see people checking out the animated show. I I believe there were even statistics that said the OG X-Men animated series, its viewership went up 500% after X-Men 97 came out. And that's awesome. Okay. It is, it's so cool. And it's one of those things where you, you look at what is happening with Fallout. Fantastic. Brilliant. So good for not just the show, but for the games. You're now elevating all the other stuff. It's like you're creating more value, not less. And I think studios really need to pay attention to what's happening here with Fallout because that is how you do it. And it's not even like, perfectly loyal to the game. I know there's some stuff that happens and I've watched enough videos of super sweaty people explaining the differences and how the game retcons or the show retcons certain things. But by and large, what this show did was took people that kind of knew about Fallout, made them really interested in playing the games. It took people that played the games, but it been a long time. It reinvigorated their interest and going back to play these games. This is a huge fucking W for Amazon, for Bethesda, fan freaking tastic. And so I just wanted to talk about that because it's not just that they're doing season two, which is dope. And I can't wait because I really enjoyed the first season. But it's making me think about Fallout 76. It's making me think about going to revisit these games. That's what the studios need to do. And they need to look at why this is happening, reverse engineer how we got there. And hopefully they do. Hopefully the studios can figure it out. I think it's another example of why it's so important to bring in people that have worked on the games. You know, uh, Todd himself being involved here Big, big freaking deal. You obviously have incredible talent with Jonathan Nolan. Also, this shit's kind of wild. Do you guys realize that the one Nolan brother does a big, successful movie about the bomb? And the other Nolan brother does a big, successful show about the fallout from the bomb? I thought that was kind of interesting. I was like, damn, like, dude, these Nolan brothers, they're kind of fucking cooking over here. That's kind of interesting shit. Um, But regardless, 
they they've assembled a great team. They tried to stay true to the source material, at least the spirit of the source material. And they've created this really symbi- symbiotic relationship between the new content, the old content. It's magic, dude. That's exactly what we're looking for. So hopefully it's one of those things, maybe a rising tide floats all boats. We need some fucking boats floated up in here. So hopefully Fallout Show can kind of bring forward even more of Hollywood deciphering and uh, reverse engineering why this has worked so that we get better content because that's really what it's about, right? With Star Wars, I mean, like, I don't know about you. Like, you guys tell me. You guys tell me. Has anything Star Wars recently made you want to engage in Star Wars more? Like, read more books, read more comics, play more old games? Any of you guys had that experience? It happened for me a little bit with Ahsoka. Like... And I know Ahsoka, a lot of you did not like Ahsoka the way I did. That's fine. But there were aspects of Ahsoka that really do come from the EU. And so it made me want to revisit, you know, the Abeloth stuff, uh, Legacy, that whole series. Um, I was watching and and interested in old interviews with Filoni and kind of like, I was back, baby. You know what I mean? I was like really back in it. Uh, and then episode seven and eight happened, and I was like, yeah, we're chilling. But uh, that's my point. When it comes to Marvel, X-Men 97 has kind of done that. It's kind of reinvigorated it for me. I, I kind of think about, like, the old trading cards. I was even thinking about some of the old X-Men games. Um, yeah, so I'm kind of, like, feeling it. it. You know, my relationship with Marvel is not as scorned as my relationship with Star Wars is. We were kind of just talking about that, too. Um but uh, Fallout is just kind of showing, I think, the right way to do that. And again, it's weird because this was the original idea with Disney. And they have like fallen very far away from that. So uh, something like this within the Star Wars world or in the Marvel Universe, I think could really help to kind of push things forward. So, yeah, it's kind of weird. It's like congratulations to Fallout. I guess congratulations to us as fans. But also, like, come on, Marvel and Star Wars. Like, please get your shit together. Like, pretty please get your shit together, please. Like, please. I still have to watch Fallout. It's really good. Like, I think it's really good. It's super fun. It's layered. The characters are interesting. It feels like the games. Uh, It would take a lot of work, but I feel like if they updated the animation of the OG X-Men series to X-Men 97, it would blow up even more. I don't really think you need to, personally. I think the old animation, although not nearly as clean as what we get now, I think it still holds up more or less. So I don't think you really need to do that. But I think maybe doing the Spider-Man show with the same kind of animation, that could be crazy. Maybe we don't need, like, freshman year or whatever it is. Maybe instead we do uh, just more of the 90s stuff. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? Ricky Bobby says, been growing my Marvel Comics collection uh, a good bit recently. Been sprinkling in some DC stuff and manga too. Yeah, comics, Marvel comics have been pretty decent lately. I'm enjoying a lot of the Ultimate stuff. Um, so that always helps out. Faux show. Uh, Rupert says, they need to bring back Modoc to save the MCU. I'm going to go ahead and politely disagree with you, bro. Uh, Griff says, didn't realize that Ella Pernell is Jinx in Arcane. Yeah, um, Elisa brought that up to me as well. And I think she's got great range, man. She's doing really good stuff. Josh, Fortnite is bringing back Marvel's season with the Fantastic Four. It was leaked. Yeah, I saw that. It's going to happen maybe in August. That's awesome. So we've got Star Wars Fortnite in uh, for May the 3rd. I gotta, Dude, I've told you guys this before. Star Wars Fortnite is more exciting and satisfying to me than the Jedi games. Like, I like Star Wars Fortnite. I find it to be very fun. And it gives me the feel. It gives me the nostalgia. Where are we dropping? Well, they'll probably change the map for that, right? They'll probably change the map for that. Uh, And the same thing with the Marvel Star Wars stuff. I like 
Marvel Fortnite, dude. I've got a lot of the Marvel skins because I'm a Marvel head. And that's why, too, I said the Epic deal with Disney because they invested, what was it, like $500 million into Epic? That's a great direction for Disney to go in because it takes the experience with the IP out of the hands of Hollywood people and it puts it into some Silicon Valley shit, but really it's user generated. What I mean is like right now, if you want to experience Star Wars, you're going to have to watch something that somebody in Hollywood made. Like a show, a movie, um, a comic book, uh, a novel. Maybe that's not Hollywood, but like my point is your experience with Star Wars is it, you don't have a lot to do with it. You don't put a lot of input into it. However, when it comes to a video game, especially a video game that's kind of like Fortnite or potentially like the next version of Fortnite, which is kind of like metaverse or whatever the hell they're working on, you create the experience. So you're no longer encumbered by the perception, beliefs, agenda, whatever, of another person. You craft the experience. I think Disney IP, and maybe it's just unique to the problems that Disney currently has with their audiences, I believe that's a really good thing for Disney. Because people still love Star Wars. People still love Marvel. People are sick of Disney Star Wars. People are sick of Disney Marvel. Right? But if you kind of just give them the keys, allow them to enjoy it in whatever way they feel is appropriate, you get rid of a lot of the baggage that's been created via Disney. So I think that's a, that's a pretty good move. I think that's a pretty good move for them. Uh, Fortnite is great. I'm glad I went back to the game when this whole new chapter started. Yeah, I've, I've been enjoying Fortnite. I, I hadn't played in a long time, got on there yesterday, uh, played a couple of games with you guys. I I got a top 10 off stream. Hell, maybe I'll fire up Fortnite in a little bit here and I'll show you guys my skills. I'll show you my skills, although the RAM, no, nah, no, nah, no, nah, let's wait, let's wait, because I still don't have the RAM figured out. So let's wait on that, but I got skills. I got skills. You know what I mean? That multiplying. Are you still playing Snap? Uh, not really. I mean, a little bit here, a little bit there. I love Snap. I'm just not crazy about some of the uh, some of the events they've been doing. And uh, the thing about Snap is, it kind of became a money pit, where like if you want the new shit, you're gonna have to pay. And I'm sorry, $100 for the newest, latest card, which is like about what it was. That's what it seemed like to me. That There's no universe in which that's worth it, man. You know? So I love the design, but I think the game got a little greedy. So. Uh, LS Photography says, I think you hit the nail on the head earlier. Comics and MCU are five to ten years separated. Why... Was that a mistake if it gives us a glimpse into the future of the MCU? It's not a mistake. I, I, I don't know. I don't think that's a mistake. I don't, maybe I'm not understanding what you're saying. AVX was tight last month. I mean, it seemed chill. It seemed cool. Yeah. Snap went to pay to play form yeah a little bit a little bit i mean i think you could probably just casually enjoy the game which is kind of like what i do and i'm not spending a lot of money but they want to show they want you to have the new card they want to dangle the new card in front of you and they want you to spend money and unfortunately i just think it's gotten a little out of balance when it comes to snap uh so i'm personally not really playing it a lot yeah, once you get nearly collection complete, it's hard to keep up without spending money. Yeah, totally. Mm -hmm. They made $88 million last year. I Yeah, I believe it. It's predatory. 
I don't know if I would say it's predatory, but it's um what's the right word? Like it takes advantage of people. I, I don't think it's necessarily like when I I mean I guess it is a little predatory. It is a little predatory. Um I might use a different word, but yeah. I'm afraid of wasting my time watching Rebel Moon Part 2. You and me both, but I'm doing it. I love Zack too much, man. I love Zack too much, and I have to watch Rebel Moon 2 because maybe there's an off chance that it's lit, and then I can like go to Twitter and be like, I fucking told you guys. I told you. You know? So wouldn't that be chill? Zero percent? I'm watching it, bro. But you just get ratioed? That's not true. I mean, I guess we'll find out, won't we? <sighs> this is funny since their ads are all about how they don't want you to spend all your money. Oh, really? Look, I like Ben Brode a lot. And I think Ben Brode, he pro he, I think Ben means well. But you know what's one of, this is one of the problems with corporations, bro. This idea of infinite growth. Like what logical person actually believes in infinite growth? You know what I mean? So because of the concept of infinite growth, 88 million is not good enough for this year. If they made another 88 million, you might be like, damn, dog, that's a lot of eights. 88 and 88, they got a lot of money over there. What's that, 16, 16 now? But to the corporate structure, that is literally not good enough. You better do something because we need growth. We need more than 88 million. We need 90 million. We need 100 million. It's crazy. Infinite growth is Zazie's next net worth, apparently. Yeah, isn't that crazy, dude? Zazloff, as Warner Brothers is completely melting down. Although that's not technically true. Warner Brothers is actually doing decent in the movie theaters. They kind of flip spots with Disney. It's kind of ironic, but they're they're not exactly doing great in their stock price. This guy got fifty million dollars. Isn't that crazy? Josh, you're gonna talk about the Forbes article. Should we talk about the Forbes article? What do I need to look up? Forbes Star Wars. It'll probably go right up. From four days ago? Oh, boy. Hey, remember all of you people that said I'm way harsher on Star Wars? Here we go. Get out of here, Forbes. Punk-ass Forbes. Okay. Wait, let me get this pulled up properly sized here so we can read it together. Guys, 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 stop me if you've heard this one before. Adam is discrediting some source article or person that is talking shit on Star Wars. Just stop, guys, stop me if you've heard this one before. We need an alarm. We need a little like, or it's like the meme with George Bush where they're whispering in his ear. Sir, Adam has tried to discredit somebody talking shit on Star Wars again. Like, that's what it is. And I better not say woke. If I say woke, he's going to leave. Other than what I just said. He's out. He's out. Anyway, okay, let's do this. Also, I've got a pain in my neck. It feels like a vein or something is about to burst. So if I don't make it through this article, just know... I died doing what I love, shitting all over 
Disney Star Wars. Okay, here we go. Oh boy, oh boy. What's this? For base? For bees? Uh, I don't know. I've not heard of this website before, but they want me to subscribe for $50 a year, so I assume it's a pretty good one. Uh, for bees here says Disney Star Wars box office profits fail to cover cost of buying Lucasfilm. Caroline Reed, senior contributor. Wait a minute. Is that a lady? Is that a female reporter? Interesting. That's going to put some people in a mental pretzel. Okay. Anyway, let's just see what's going on here. Box office profits generated by Disney's Star Wars movies have fallen $2.8 billion short of covering the media's giant purchase of the sci-fi saga creator Lucasfilm, according to analysis of recently filed financial statements. Woo! Hot damn! That sounds bad. Disney bought Lucasfilm for $4 billion in 2012 and soon gave the green light to a new trilogy of Star Wars movies, which teamed up rising stars. <laughs> I'm sorry, dude. Which teamed up rising stars, Daisy Ridley and John Boyega with Mark Hamill, Harrison Ford, and the late Gary Fisher. Uh, who headlined the original movie more than 30 years earlier. Uh, okay, let's keep going. Let's keep going. Uh, all the stars aligned when The Force Awakens, the first film in the new series, was released in 2015. According to the industry analyst box office mojo, it grossed a staggering $2.1 billion, causing Disney to commission two spinoff movies as well as the two sequels that were already planned. However, as the series continued, there was a disturbance in the force due to an over-reliance on computer-generated effects and a lack of the gritty, quirky characters who made the original movie's smash hits. We're going to keep reading this. And I'm sure Caroline has some good points in here. But I would just like to point out that she is suggesting that Daisy Ridley and John Bayega were rising stars. And in the next paragraph, implying that the reason things went awry is because they used too much CGI and they didn't have gritty, quirky characters. If somebody can explain what a gritty, quirky character is, please send me a DM on s somewhere. I, I, I don't know what we're doing here. Okay, let's keep going. In 2019, The Rise of Skywalker, the third installment in the new trilogy, hauled in around half as much box office as The Force Awakens, though the series soon had a renaissance. Just a few weeks before the first case of... Rona was discovered in December 2019. Disney debuted its first Star Wars streaming series, The Mandalorian. It was an instant success thanks to the unlikely pairing of its protagonist. The series is named after a gruff armored clad bounty hunter played by Pedro Pascal who is tasked with tracking down the family of a pointy eared green alien called Grogu. Photos of the cute character went viral because of its resemblance to the beloved Star Wars sage Yoda. The timing couldn't have been better as it thrust the Mandalorian into the spotlight just as the world went into lockdown. Viewers were stuck indoors for the majority of the following year, leading to a surge in subscriptions to the Disney Plus streaming platform. The Mandalorian was watched more than ever any show and according to nielsen it racked up 4.5 billion minutes of view time during its seven week run peaking at 1.2 billion during the week its fi finale aired it didn't just appeal to fans but critics too 
Audience has awarded The Mandalorian a 92% rating on review aggregator Rotten Tomatoes, whilst critics went even further with a score of 93%. That's not really that much further. In fact, the industry liked it so much, it was nominated for six Primetime Emmy Awards and 42 Primetime Creative Arts Emmy Awards, winning in 15 categories. God damn, I don't even know that. Did it really win all those awards? Woo! Unsurprisingly, it was renewed for two further seasons and even spawned its own spinoff, The Book of Boba Fett, which premiered in December of 2021. The only reason that a fourth season of The Mandalorian hasn't gone into production is that a movie based on its two stars is due to be released in 2026. It doesn't stop there. The show's success spurred the development of a suite of new Star Wars productions. Since it debuted, three other streaming shows have been released, and three more movies are in development in addition to The Mandalorian and Grogu. The declining interest in Disney's initial trilogy of movies seems like a distant memory. No, it fucking does not. And the mouse has made the most of it. Last month, Disney released a 76-page presentation singing the praises of its chief executive, Bob Iger, in a bid to convince stockholders to side with him in a battle with activist investors. It worked. One of its key boasts was about the supposedly spellbinding return on investment generated by the franchises that Disney acquired under Iger. This is where it's going to get good. The presentation gives the impression that Disney's Star Wars trilogy generated a 2.9 times return on the purchase of Lucasfilm as the figure is presented next to a timeline of key events in the production company's history. They include the release of the Disney movies and its acquisition of Lucasfilm, which is the only milestone marked with a star. Adding to this impression is the fact that at the other end of the timeline is the Star Wars logo and the photo of the Mandalorian and his little green friend. However, buried in the fine print is the revelation that the purchase price of Disney isn't even included in the ROI calculation. Instead, it is purely based on the box office performance of Disney's Star Wars trilogy, its two spin-off movies, merchandise, DVD, and Blu-ray sales. As revealed, the methodology is questionable as Disney based the ROI on the revenue generated by the movies and merchandise, DVD, Blu-rays, rather than the profit that they made as it should have done. Using the revenue rather than the profit artificially inflates the result as it doesn't factor into the cost that Disney had to pay out. Okay. So you know what she's saying here? Let's like just kind of keep everybody engaged, you know, wake up. She's saying they used revenue, not the take home. So they're not including the cost of production, the cost of distribution, the cost of advertising. They're simply just saying, the movie made this much money. The merchandise made this much money. And honestly, a lot like companies do this all the time. They misrepresent things. They're trying to make a point. They're trying to glaze. It is what it is. Disney in particular, though, they've done this quite a bit recently. I mean, we all watched the uh, Deadpool trailer for uh, the Super Bowl. And Disney literally dropped a headline the next day saying that it broke an all-time trailer record viewership number. And they included 125 million views that watched a 30-second trailer that was played during the Super Bowl. Right? So Disney being a little shady with the numbers doesn't surprise me at all. Makes sense. Even this wasn't enough for the media giant, so it also forecast the revenue that it expects Star Wars to make. So that wasn't even enough. They literally got out there and were like, oh, yeah, and also it's going to make all the bajillions from here. That's not all, folks. 
It's also making all the money from here on out. Wow. Uh, in other words, Disney hasn't actually received the revenue that it used to calculate the return on its investment. My God, bro. I mean, <laughs> wow. That's interesting. Uh, in summary, despite seeming to do so, Disney's presentation doesn't actually reveal whether its Star Wars movies have covered the cost of its purchase of Lucasfilm. There may be a good reason for this. Analysis of more than 800 pages of company fil filings has revealed that the cost of making Disney's five Star Wars movies hit a total of $2.1 billion. Wow. Peaking at $567 million on The Force Awakens. However, that's just the start. Mindful of this blockbuster budget, Disney devised an ingenious way to make money back on the movie. Instead of shooting it in the United States, it chose Pinewood Studios in the United Kingdom where the original trilogy of films were made. This enabled it to benefit from the UK government's audiovisual expenditure credit, which gives the studio cash reimbursement of up to 25.5% of the money that they spend in the UK provided that it represents at least 10% of the film's total cost. At the start of this year, the UK government slightly raised the reimbursement ceiling from 25% in the face of competition from other countries which were offering similar schemes. It has helped to make the UK a dream ticket for movie makers, and according to the British Film Institute, foreign studios contributed around 77% of the $1.8 billion 1.4 billion euros spent on making films in the country last year. With so much at stake, Disney didn't take any chance, got an endorsement from the UK government right at the start. In 2014, Treasure Secretary George Osborne proudly announced that Pinewood would not only be the home of The Force Awakens, but also its two sequels. This will mean more jobs and more investment, he said. It is great news for people working at Pinewood Studios, from the set designers to the carpenters. The production also had an impact farther afield. Sets featuring the iconic Millennium Falcon and X-Wing spaceships were built at Royal Air Force Base, about 55 miles west of London, whilst the mountainous Lake District region in North England was the setting for the planet Taco Donna, hiding place of the sword-like lightsaber weapon belong to Hamill's Luke Skywalker character. Using local staff wasn't the only catch that came with a generous fiscal incentives. Movie budgets are usually done, blah, 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 blah. Some of this is like blah, blah, blah to me. Uh, the production companies have code names so they don't raise any attention, blah, blah, blah. Condition of receiving the cash embarrassment, uh, companies must be responsible for everything from pre-production and delivery of the movie and paying for the services uh, relating to the finished film. Yeah, you guys hear, like, Liam's going crazy out there. I don't know what's going on. Uh, another reason for the companies often file financial statements around a year period. This is why the results of the floods were filed in 2023. Blah, blah, blah. Surprisingly, this isn't more than Disney expected financial statements. Note that at the year end, estimated total costs within budget salaries alone came to 22 point. Jesus, blah, blah, blah. Then come in the cash reimbursements, blah, blah, fucking blah. Second biggest budget of 2019, 542 million. Okay, so I'll stop for a second and just say some of this stuff is stuff that um, like Valiant Renegade talks about because... Disney will often hide the actual cost of things for years. And then they finally will let some of it out like years and years down the road. Um, so I absolutely believe this. I believe this is true. Um, and I believe that's what's going on here. I'm going all the way down here. So this is kind of interesting. Box office share, net spending, profit loss. Wow. Wow. So they lost like 90, only made 89, made 346 on that one, 281 there. Wow. That's crazy. 
Uh, Disney spent a total of $298.7 million making Rogue One. Blah, 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 blah. Blah, 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 blah. My God, bro. She, I mean, she went hard in this article. The Star Wars movies are the jewel in Lucasfilm's crown and generate the lion's share of the revenue, which is, of course, why Disney highlighted them in the timeline in its presentation. With several Star Wars movies in the pipeline, Disney still has a chance to make its money back through their box office profits. The films have rediscovered the magic formula to appeal to fans, but aren't yet a force to be reckoned with for investment or investors. Okay, so basically we have this long article, a lot of detail of the actual cost that these movies are making. Um, and uh, the person that did this went through 800 uh, pages of financial records from Disney, which is a, pri a publicly traded company. So they have to report this stuff, right? Forbes is also, of course, known for being in financial matters. That's their whole thing. So I believe this. And the reason this matters, like, why would we even talk about this, right? Like, why does this even matter? Some of you, you know, you have the attitude of, I don't care about this sort of stuff. I don't care about Nielsen. I don't care about charting. I only care whether I like the thing or not. I think that's fine. Like, truly, that's a completely valid way to, like, enjoy your content. But here's where the rubber meets the road. A lot of us are very unhappy with where Star Wars is at right now. A lot of us did not like what was done with the sequel trilogy. And yet... A lot of people try to say to us, the people that are disgruntled, yeah, but they're making so much money. Or, yeah, but Star Wars is so successful. Star Wars is bigger than it's ever been. No, it isn't. And I think for a lot of us that are very upset with the state of Star Wars, things like this matter because... You can no longer point at the big numbers for Force Awakens and The Last Jedi, even Rogue One. And you can no longer use those numbers to justify or to try to delegitimize concerns from fans or the types of fans that are very frustrated with what is going on. And it's like, we're just trying to point out and say... Yeah, I don't think Kathy's doing a good job. I actually don't think Star Wars is making a bunch of money. I personally think Star Wars is hurting. I think Star Wars is going downhill. I think they have messed up significantly. And articles like this are important because here's the thing. Regardless of how you feel about Disney or how you feel about Disney Star Wars, you should, ma you should care that corporations are trying to spin things, obfuscate, hide the truth, lie to you. It should matter because you should understand that powerful entities that have the ability to squash down dissension are doing that. They're hiding it. They're lying. Right? So for me, I totally believe it. It doesn't surprise me at all. And I think, hopefully, investors get wind of this. Because at this point, I don't know what it would take for, for Star Wars to have to go through a serious change. But I strongly feel that $5 billion in box office has been something that is continuously brought up to support Kathleen Kennedy remaining in charge. Like, that's not crazy, right? Like, you, that's not a crazy thing to think about. If people are saying, I don't know about this direction for Star Wars, you don't think people are going to bring up the, the, the revenue? 
right? So I think shit like this matters. Uh, I think you should share this video out. I think people should be talking about this. I think investors should be talking about this because I am a person that is not happy with Star Wars, and I think it's reflected in the numbers. And I think they should change. So there you go. Um, yeah, let me know what you think, chat. Except for Adam. I I, I, I don't really... I mean, come on. You know, what's Adam going to say? What I mean, what's Adam? What, you know, we could probably predict it. Uh, if Star Wars isn't making too much profit, then the value of Lucasfilm is quite low. Could you imagine George selling his Disney shares and buying Lucasfilm back? You know, crazier things have happened... But I very much doubt that's on the table at all. You know what I mean? The amount of copium they are on is crazy. Star Wars has made nothing but mid shit for years and they cancel everything under the sun. Yes, it's true. <laughs> right? He'll say binging is horrible. He will probably say that. Yeah. Do I think Star Wars should make more? Yes. But that's a different discussion than what this article is suggesting. Uh, what do you think this article is suggesting? What do you think they're suggesting, Adam? Could they be suggesting that the numbers Disney is using to say they have covered the cost of buying Lucasfilm is actually not real? Would Disney ever offload and sell Lucasfilm? Well, it's more like divesting, right? They would be divesting. Um, I think so, but but not with Star Wars specifically. I think Star Wars is too valuable to Disney. That somehow theatrical income is the only way to show income uh, from the purchase. Yeah, I mean, we're just going to have to agree to disagree, man. I, I, I don't think Forbes would come out and and try to lie to make it seem like a publicly traded company was being shady about how they report their numbers. Like, you really think so? So you have more faith in the institution of Disney than you do in the institution of Forbes. That's basically what you're saying, right? That's what you're saying. And uh, I'm just going to have to disagree with that. Like, I I don't even hate Disney like that. But guys, do you know the history of Disney? Like, do you really know the history of Disney? Do you know how Disney has literally... Like, okay. Have you ever uh, put in a, a, a VHS? This is going to take some of you guys back, okay? Have you ever put a VHS into a VHS player? Anybody? 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 Bueller? Anybody? Okay. So when you put a VHS into a VHS player, have you ever seen an FBI warning? From the FBI? Okay, do you know that Disney lobbied to change copyright law so that that warning could exist? They, they did that. Disney lobbied to change public domain law. That's what they did. So again, I'm not even, I'm not like the mo I'm not a super anti Disney. I just kind of consider them to be like a corporation. They happen to control IP that I really care about. I've never really given a shit about Mickey Mouse or any of that stuff, but it just is what it is. D Disney has a history of kind of being sus. You see what I mean? 
So if you're telling me you're going to trust Disney over Forbes in this situation, I'm just going to say uh, that is fine. That is your opinion. I disagree. And also think like just think about what they're talking about, bro. They misrepresented that shit. Not only did they use revenue over gross, they projected profits that they have no idea how they're going to actually be. Right? I think Forbes is just pointing out that that was sus, that potentially Disney has not actually covered the cost of even buying Lucasfilm. And I think investors have a right to know that. I think the public has the right to know that. And I think Star Wars fans have a right to know that. So I don't really see the issue here. I don't see the problem. Unless you have an incredible bias and you think any shots at Disney are bad faith. Like, how else could you be uh, upset about that? Like, why would you be upset about it? You know what I mean? Yeah. I'm saying the article is bad faith, leaving out other forms of income. So you're so you're suggesting that they left off like park attendance merchandise and all of these other things and if they had calculated that correctly like what their case would be i just i like respectfully adam like i don't understand number one i don't understand why you're even upset or refuting it number two i don't really understand what your argument is Forbes is pointing out that the numbers Disney delivered, Disney delivered, are misleading. And your answer to them is, yeah, but you're misleading too. What are we talking about here, dude? Yeah, but you're misleading too. It doesn't matter. I'm I'm talking about how they're misleading. Yeah. So anyways, I think that's kind of an interesting article. I think that it's uh, something that Star Wars fans should be aware of. And I think the next time, if you're a person like Adam, and I'm just, I'm giving Adam shit, but I like Adam. But if you're, but if you're a person that gets triggered when people say Star Wars isn't succeeding, or if I say Kathleen Kennedy is horrible, she's created a horrible culture. She's done a lot of damage to Star Wars. And you're the kind of person that's like, but she made E.T., you know, or like, look at what The Force Awakens made. All I'm suggesting to you is that's not necessarily a sound argument. And I think Forbes has noticed that. Uh, and I think that's worth talking about. So that's what it is. Hunter Larson says revenue should be used to argue against KK. She was handled a golden goose and revenue has diminished every movie. Much love. Yeah. Revenue could be uh, looked at that way, too. Um, although I would say, to be fair, if you look at the older movies, they kind of resemble that as well. Like the first movie was like such by and far and away, such a massive phenomenon. And then it makes less. Right. Um, so. That isn't necessarily as weird. I would suggest in the modern setting, it is a little bit weirder. It's not necessarily weird for the brand itself specifically, but yeah. Uh, I just watched Dune 2 for the first time, and I'm embarrassed as a Star Wars fan and as a Marvel fan, cinematic-wise, recently. Yeah, Dune 2 is very good. I enjoyed Dune 2 quite a bit. Okay, um... Let me see here. Is there anything else that we should be getting into? Or do you guys want to argue about Disney even more? Should we argue about Disney more? Or should we read some uh, Marvel manga or something? And also, give me one second here. I got I to gotta do a thing. Hold up. 
Wait a minute. Oh, also, total side note here. I saw because you know how we always call um, you know how we always call Feige uh, White Suge Knight. So uh, strangely, uh, the actual Suge Knight was recently on uh, like a podcast, and I was like listening to a little bit of. I was like, "Dang, this is crazy." Suge Knight. I was like, wow, really? Hmm, interesting. It's a pretty wild one. All right, let me get a couple of those over there. Boom, bada boom, bada bing, bada boom, boom, bing, bing, bing. Oh, man, everybody on Twitch is talking shit on uh, Adam. That's crazy. Guys, don't be so toxic, but also keep it up, you know what I mean? <clears throat> Do you need to watch the previous seasons to watch X Men ninety seven? No, I don't think so. I think as long as you have an idea of what the X Men are, you'll you'll get caught up pretty easily. Uh, have I watched Bad Batch? I have not watched Bad Batch this week or last week, but maybe I will over the weekend. Open up another Coke. No, I'm chill. I'm chilling on that. I'm, uh, <laughs> I'm good on that. I'm good on that. Don't worry about it. Hmm. Shetty says, oh, uh, Prez says, play New Vegas. Yeah, I've never played it. Maybe I will. Uh, Shetty says, eight months of gifts. Holy shit. I'm uh, late to the Diamond Lounge. Let me in. Let me in. We'll let you in there, man. We'll let you in there. Don't worry. You mean the mid-batch, Josh? I like Bad Batch a lot, but I mean, if I really was fucking with it, I'd watch the episodes by now. You know what I mean? Shreddy, not Shetty. Sorry. Sorry. It's already called Bad Batch. Oh, damn. That's true, actually. Have you watched Fa Fallout? It's awesome. Yeah, I really like Fallout. Ryan Garcia came in 3.5 pounds overweight. Now, does that mean he owes Devin 500K per round now? Because didn't they make some kind of agreement with that? Man, wow. Way to drop the ball on that one. Are you ripped? Nah, unfortunately, I'm kind of fat. I'm working on it. Devin said he paid. Well, that's funny. At least he paid, I guess. Huh? Still pretty wild. Still pretty wild. Did you ever talk about UFC 300? Yeah, we talked a lot about it. I thought it was dope, man. One of the best cards in a long time. One of the best cards in a long time. Uh, 500,000 per pound overweight. Oh, wow. Okay, I thought it was per round, but I guess it was per pound, huh? Holloway. Yeah, Holloway's pretty great, huh? I'm excited to see uh, whoever he fights next, actually. I'm pretty excited for it. Josh, have you the BS that is outlaws? Uh, what do you mean, bro? Did John Jones punch his drug tester? Um, I've heard a couple of things about that. I don't think... I don't think it's what everybody thought. Have you seen the BS? Uh, no, what BS? What are you talking about? Are you talking about the bots? Because I heard there were some bots promoting it. Heard about that. Is that what you're talking about? All right, let's see if I can find. Wait, 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 wait. Viz. Viz Media. <gasps> Whoa! Okay, so this is kind of cool. I didn't know that this was kind of how it was going. So apparently... 
If you have Marvel Unlimited, you access your favorite Marvel manga titles with a one-month gift to Viz Media Manga. Read uh, new stories now featuring Spider-Man, Deadpool, and blah blah blah. I wanted to I wanted to read at least one of these to see how we liked it. You know what I mean? Should we check out Deadpool Samurai? the hell is this what we got going on here how do I how do I oh so this is like legit manga style What the hell is happening here? Why can't I turn the fucking page? Use the arrow keys. Dude, I have one of those stupid keyboards that doesn't have the arrow keys. So I have to do this. This. How do I do the arrows if I don't have the arrow keys? Maybe my controller will work. Hang on. Change your key bindings? What are you talking about? Admit defeat? I mean, we might have to. This feels pretty stupid. I thought you could do like function and do it. Or is it alt? Because look, I got... Let me chat. Chat. Hang on. Karma? No, your karma. Okay. So, you can see, I've got the arrows. And then, oh, wait, those aren't arrows. Those are the, the other things. Yeah, this shit ain't got no arrows. Wait, 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 wait. It's got arrows. So, how do I, how do I get these arrows here? Is it function, maybe? Wait, no. Are you kidding me? You press them. Oh, you press function. Yeah, so is it at the same time then? Or holding it? It's not doing shit. Hold function and then press. Okay, holding function. Oh! I got it to work all on my own! I got it to work all on my own. With no help from chat. Hang on, let's do it like this. So you guys can see. Okay, ready? So, here it is. Uh, were you, where were you the day Josh became an old man? What? What the what? Okay, here we go. Check it out. So, so sir, what brings you to this run downtown? That's quite the unusual suit you're wearing. I get that a lot. People ask me, are those undies on your head? Where I come from, though, everybody runs around in spandex. Huh, is that right? And where are you from? And so, because this is manga, I, I saw one of the other ones that actually are not done in manga style. They're actually done like in American comic book style where they go like left to right. But you have to read right to left when you're doing your manga. See, I know things. I'm trying to help you out here. Marvel. Your boy got his very own series in Jump. Nice. 
Thanks. Send the bill to Kodansha. Uh, already then. This the place? Is this the serum? Yes, doctor. We've already... We're already dismantling it across the globe. World domination is finally at hand. And he gets a ringing of his phone call. Who's this? Hi, Daddy. It's me, Gail. Didn't the editor tell you, Daddy? Evil organizations plotting to start World War III and take over the world are so cliche. Where are you? Show yourself. You want to know where I am? Take a gander outside. Flip. What? And then, uh, vroom, as the elevator's going, ding. Maximum effort. Oh, shit. Looks kind of clean. Uh, you really just did what the enemy told you? What are you, good little boys? Like you doing working for an evil organization? If you need a career change, I can hook you up with a job search site. Ha, 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 ha. So funny. So funny. Uh, who is this punk? How dare he interrupt my research? Dash. Uh, go, all of you. Kill him. Huh? Sending a bunch of henchmen to waste me. Now, where have I seen that before? Shimp. Ha <laughs> I got him. You didn't read my one shot, did you? <laughs> Good one. Impossible. How? Splint. I actually, like, real talk, I'm kind of liking this, to be honest with you. I, I, I might read even more of this. I really like manga. I like the manga style, sensibilities, action. I think Wade's also, like, kind of good in manga. Marvel X Shonen Jump Super Collaboration now on sale, huh? Hey, Cap, are you sure about this guy? He's a good guy. His methods are unique, but I've warned him about taking things too far. 10 points if you get it through the stomach, 50 points if it goes through the head. So I see. Now, that's kind of interesting because Cap does actually go to bat for Deadpool a couple of different times. It's part of the reason that Deadpool really admires Captain America. So that's kind of interesting. Kind of interesting they would put there. Uh, villain activity is on the rise worldwide. It's becoming too much for us to handle alone. I need you to go meet with him, Tony. Ugh. Oh, sorry. Didn't mean to kill you all off during the cutaway. It's just you and me now. Doc. You think you've won? I still have an ace up my sleeve. Right. See, sometimes uh, manga can actually be a little bit confusing. I think the way this is meant to be read is here and then here down. Uh, right. The one foreshadowed on page six. Ah, and then he takes the serum. By the way, I'm the only writer that's ever put like a serum into their comics. Everybody else is copying me. Oh, shit. Look at this. He hulked out. It worked. I'm now a mighty super powered life form. It's as though unlimited power is welling within me pissed this is the part where he says and it feels so good and it feels so very good called it you want to feel good i'll make you feel good what the hell road rage gets a healing factor too duplicating powers right from the first chapter that's just lazy writing that's kind of fun That's kind of cool, man. And I like, so the thing that about Viz that I really like is Viz gives you access to a ton of manga for a very low price, very low cost. Um, and I've often thought like, that's a big part of why manga is crushing American comics right now. So I read that for free. A lot of this stuff you can read for free on Viz but also the prices are like really cheap because um, you can buy this from Viz. I would assume if you have a Viz subscription, you get to read all of this stuff for free. I'm just not 100% sure. Okay. Uh, the Drinker just dropped a Warhammer video. We got to watch it. Logan says with a 10 spot, I got to tell you, that's very generous, brother. Thank you so much. 
says, just want to say the entire time you were saying Rebel Moon would be the next big sci-fi IP. I take back what I said about your generosity. I can see where this is going. Uh, I was saying it'd be Dune. Just wanted to take a victory lap after those horrendous Rebel Moon reviews. Well, thank you so much. Oh, God. Here we go. There's been a bit of a ruckus in the Warhammer 40k community in recent days after the parent company Games Workshop decided to make some changes to the lore of their fictional universe. And, well, they haven't exactly been well received. But what changes did they make to cause such a backlash, you might ask? Well, this is where I'm going to have to delve into the lore a little bit, so indulge me. The simplistic view is that Warhammer 40k is set in a fictional future where mankind is locked into a state of constant warfare across the galaxy and has devolved into a kind of quasi-religious military dictatorship where human life is cheap and all that matters is the survival of the Imperium. Mm -hmm. To quote the company themselves, in the grim darkness of the 41st millennium, there is only war. True. Nice. It's uh, a neat wait, setting you know for what? tabletop Actually, war gaming. We're missing. We're going to restart this because I'm going to record this. I'll probably put this up on the Clips channel. Because I want to I wanna see, man. I want to see. And maybe I'll also post it on Reddit, the Reddit I left because I'm so sick of all these stinkies. Okay. Warhammer. Bit of controversy lately. Female custodies. The drinker has a take. Let's see. Let's see what he has to say. I'll probably agree with him a lot here because I'm super fucking pissed. But also, does he even Warhammer? Do you know the lore? We're going to put it to the test. Here we go. There's been a bit of a ruckus in the Warhammer 40k community in recent days after the parent company Games Workshop decided to make some changes to the lore of their fictional universe. And well, they haven't exactly been well received. But what changes did they make to cause such a backlash, you might ask? Well, this is where I'm going to have to delve into the lore a little bit, so indulge me. The simplistic view is that Warhammer 40k is set in a fictional future where mankind is locked into a state of constant warfare That's across true. the galaxy and has devolved into a kind it's of- It's true, but it's not just Warhammer. It's like all of the galaxy and there are non-humans. One of the things that makes Warhammer better than Dune is the fact that there are aliens of quasi-religious military dictatorship where human life is cheap and all that matters is the survival of the Imperium. To quote the company themselves, in the grim darkness of the 41st millennium, there is only war. Nice. That's true. It's a neat setting for tabletop wargaming, and there's an absolute metric ton of lore and history that's gradually been built up around it over the decades. In fact, you can actually ignore the game inside of things altogether and just immerse yourself in the fictional worlds. There's more than enough books, short stories, graphic novels, video games, and magazine articles to keep you amused for decades. Yeah, and that's that's part of the reason that Warhammer lore YouTube channels do so well on the platform. Because the lore does get sort of piecemealed and it's also like very expansive, like uh, just as a brief example, um, you have the Imperium, but then you have all of the Space Marine chapters, which all have a Primarch, a Gene Seed, their own, like whether it's Arthurian or Roman or werewolves or vampires, all sorts of like other fantasy elements actually become a part of the lore for each individual chapter. So it's like layers upon layers, fantastic lore. Let's keep going. Anyway, one of the most iconic symbols of the 40k universe has got to be the Space Marines, genetically and surgically enhanced super soldiers wrapped up in power armor that are deployed to the most critical war zones across the galaxy. They're yeah. the very apex of human warfare, and the elite amongst them are the Custodes, the per- we're not going to go too hard on the drinker here, but that is not true. <laughs> uh, sp space Marines are one thing. Custodies are a totally separate thing. Custodies predate the creation of Space Marines. They are created in a completely different way. Yeah. Personal bodyguards of the Emperor of Mankind. 
In short, these are not guys with whom to fuck. Now, there's a lot of lore surrounding the Space Marines and the Custodies themselves, how they're created and how they function, but one of the most fundamental aspects of their creation is that they're all male. Hence the reason they're all referred to as Battle Brothers. <laughs> I know, right? Who would have thought that an oppressive, xenophobic, totalitarian military regime wouldn't have diversity and inclusion initiatives? <laughs> the reasons for this are a combination of established lore, the target audience, and, well, basic common sense. From the lore side of things, the process for creating space marines is only compatible with male physiology, and there's no way to adapt it to work on female bodies. The super advanced technology used to do it is barely even understood by this point in history, That's and true. to be honest, there's never been a whole lot of incentive to pursue it because, well, what's the point? Only the strongest, toughest and most resilient individuals can even hope to survive the process of being turned into a space marine, much less a custodies. To put it into context, less than a fraction of 1% of the population would even be considered as candidates, which pretty yeah. much rules women out of the equation, so it always seemed like a question that basically answered itself. Yeah, and this is something that's like actually really well established. Um, the aspirins and the people that are uh, recruited to be a space marine, definitely all male. It's pretty specific talking about how that process would not work with female physiology. Some of it just has to do with uh, bone density, um, pain tolerance, uh, even just space inside the cavities. Space Marines have like three separate hearts, four separate lungs, things like that. You could maybe see some potential female bodies able to withstand that sort of stuff, but the majority of the people that go into the Space Marine program end up dying or bailing out before they actually become a Space Marine. So it's a very small percent of the universe. It's a very small percent of the army. Most of the military for the Imperium is uh, the Astra Militarum or the guards. So guardsmen, guardswomen. These are like your standard foot soldiers, right? So really really small amount of people that can make it through here. We'll see if he knows the Custodes thing too. And if I had to guess, I'd say a lot of this probably comes down to Games Workshop having a solid understanding of their target audience and what they like. Because, how can I put this, not all that many girls are into tabletop wargaming. You don't say. There's some for- You know what's funny about that is, uh, he, he's, tr he's right, like I wouldn't say he's wrong, but Warhammer- in particular does seem to have a lot of females that play um there's a lot of females perhaps this has something to do with the uh sort of crafts aspect of the painting and the assembling um perhaps it has to do with the fact that there are a lot of female centric either armies or people within the imperium so even the custodies they have a female section before all this bullshit known as the sisters of silence who are actually technically blanks. They don't have a soul. And like, we could go on a whole thing with that, but like that exists. You have the sisters of battle who are an in pretty much entirely female army. Um, yeah. You have female demons. You have a lot of female stuff in Warhammer. And uh, just for my part, as a person that's in the hobby, there's a lot of females that tabletop, but that's still probably like a 20, 80, bro. You know what I'm saying? It's still probably 20 to 80, but that's more than comics. I think comics is like 10 to 90, you know? For sure, I'm not taking anything away from them, but generally, if I had to pick the people who are most likely to be into things like Warhammer, well, it's gonna be guys like this. Yep. And for a good 30 years or so, everyone seemed pretty happy with that state of affairs. The problem is that Warhammer started to get popular, really popular, and so it was only a matter of time before it attracted the attention of modern audiences. Not tabletop gamers playing today, of course, or even just women who happen to enjoy the hobby, but instead activists who totally don't give a shit about anything to do with 40k, but just want to score another little victory in the endless war to dominate every single aspect of enter- Alright, so I'm gonna take issue with this, and I take issue with, uh, like, Drinker makes this point all the time, and I almost always take issue with it, because here's here's the reality. What do you think the crossover is- to the females that already play Warhammer and the political ideology that he might call modern audiences. 
I hope that's I hope my question makes sense. But what I'm basically suggesting to you is just like he's able to extrapolate out that a lot of the Warhammer audience is male, I can extrapolate out that a lot of the female Warhammer players are probably left leaning. That's the same kind of logical leap, and it is a leap in both his case and mine. But I don't think it's technically fair to frame this as a totally incomplete outside force, a whole bunch of Taurus. It's not necessarily that. And I think one of the issues is when you make it that, you you sort of wipe all of these certain people's opinions just out of like off the table, if that makes sense. Does that make sense? Entertainment and culture. The push to make the world of 40k more diverse and inclusive has been going on for a while now, and one of the big objectives they've been gunning for is female space marines. Because truly, what woman doesn't want to see herself represented as a psychopathic, 8 foot tall, genetically engineered killing machine? It doesn't matter to these people that 30 years of lore says it can't be done. It doesn't matter that most actual gamers don't want to see it happen. It doesn't matter that there's already entire armies of female only soldiers. Yeah. Specifically created to give women more of a presence in the game worlds. All that matters is winning, breaking down another barrier, homogenizing and blending everything together into an indistinguishable grey sludge of inclusion, gleefully taking another treasured thing away from their enemies so they can gloat about it and push for even greater victories next time. Mm -hmm. And a few days ago, they moved one step closer to their goal with the release of a new rulebook from Games Workshop, where it casually dropped in the fact that female custodies are now apparently a thing. Fuck. That's pretty interesting considering they've literally never been spoken about before and everything we know about them suggests that can't happen, but okay, sure. Natural it's not that everything we know about them suggests that it doesn't happen. And so far in the video, he hasn't spoken about the difference between making a custody and making a space room, a space marine. So if he doesn't understand the difference, it seems as though he's implying that because the lore is suggesting that you cannot make a female space marine, it is also suggesting you cannot make a female custodies. I am a fucking sweaty ass custodies army having motherfucker. And I will just tell you, that's not true. That's not even why I'm upset. So that feels also like an unfair point. Naturally, fans were confused by this, and when they were questioned about it on Twitter, Games Workshop's response was simple and blunt. Since the first of the 10,000 were created- now, this is the fucking problem, dude. This is the problem. This is what the attention should be on. This right here. There have always been female custodians. LIAR! You know, I can't help thinking that you guys are trying to do a bit of rewriting of history here. I can't help thinking that you finally started to bow to pressure from modern audiences, and you were almost certainly encouraged to do this by a sudden infusion of investment money from BlackRock. I can't help thinking that maybe you're trying to gaslight your own fans into believing we've always been at war with East Asia. And apparently, I'm not the only one. But Drinker, you absolute titan of tabletop tactics I hear you say, the 40k universe is rife with misinformation, retcons and rewrites. Things are constantly being- Hmm, I give them points for at least knowing this about the lore. Changed and added to the lore, so why should this be any different? I don't remember asking you a goddamn <laughs> thing. Well, let me stop you there, heretic, because there's a few little misconceptions that I'd like to clear up on this one. The development of the Warhammer universe over the past 30 years is less of a constantly shifting chessboard and more like a telescope that's slowly coming into focus. Mm, that's not true. In the early days, back in the 80s, things were intentionally vague and a lot of details were still mm, Nah, bro, he's way off here. Waiting to be filled in because the developers hadn't worked everything out yet. But over the years, those details that's have just, been filled that's in That's just so hilariously not true that if you actually know the lore, like as an example, um, when uh, Horus was first introduced as a character and when the Horus heresy was first introduced as a concept, it was, it was literally in one of the rule books as uh, one of the emperor's old and trusted generals turned against him. And then it later gets retconned into becoming the Horus Heresy, the Primarchs. Like they didn't even have the concept of the Primarchs when they were creating that. 
So, like, dude, you just don't know what you're talking about. Hundreds of articles, books, games, and rule sets, and while certain details might have been corrected and expanded on many times over, the general setting, history, characters, rule books, and foundations of the world have actually stayed extremely consistent. Oh my god, no, they haven't. And this is the problem because when you, because there's fair, dude, there are fair ways to criticize GW in this moment. This is not one of them. And I think you do a disservice. To the actual issues here, you're talking out of your ass, bro. Old world, new world. Old lore, new lore. It's an established thing. Dude, in the old lore, the custodies weren't shit. There were these big banana-looking motherfuckers that got fucked up all the time. It was new lore that made them the golden gods that they are now. Like, that is just incorrect, my guy. You don't need to stretch. You're on the right side of this one. You don't need to lie. Like, that's just, that is not true. So no, that excuse doesn't wash with me anymore, boy -o. And as I've mentioned in previous videos, the lore is something you should respect enough to work around instead of constantly changing. Because believe it or not, people actually get... <sighs> it's not as much about respecting the lore as it is the fans. The lore is constantly evolving. That is true. And they could have earned this. They could have made a Primark novel. They could have, like, dedicated time and energy. They could have, instead of just making a retcon, they could have explained why something like this is necessary. They didn't. They took the lazy, gaslighting, cowardly corporation way out of it. That is what they did. That is true. It's not that they broke an ironclad, pre-established, 30-year, universally accepted piece of lore. That's not what happened. Invested in this stuff, they buy into the fictional world you've created, and the more you fuck with that, the more difficult you make it for those people to stay invested that because they know that true. at any moment that some prick might point. decide to completely rewrite it to suit their own selfish bullshit needs. But drinker, it's just one little change. Why do you care so much if there's female custodies? That's an interesting question, but here's an even better one. Why did you care so much that there weren't female custodies? Why did it bother you so much that you've spent years complaining about it? Why do you feel so strongly that this thing must be changed? And why do you get so defensive when people question you about it? What, what the fuck is happening right now? Is she having a hypothetical conversation with somebody that's not me? What is happening? As heel versus babyface so correctly observed, it's really easy to ask the old why do you care so much question once you've gotten what you want. It's easy to defend the status quo once the status quo has been changed to suit your demands. Until of course you've decided that it has to change again, in which case you certainly will care about this stuff again. And make no mistake, they will demand- Brother, I do care man! I fucking care! A lot! I would just prefer that you ain't like- sound arguments and that more things be changed to suit them and i guess that's the real crux of this argument here it's the reason warhammer fans are pushing back so loudly against it it's not just what the change is although that's pretty bad all by itself but it's what it represents that's the bigger issue it's the sacrifice of artistic freedom on the altar of identity politics this right here boys and girls is the thin edge of the wedge it's the first little crack in the dam that will eventually become a gaping hole because here's the thing the moment you make any concession no matter how tiny, you've already given the game away. Concession, you've made it wait, no wait. concession to what? What are we talking about here? The moment you give a concession. What is with this hyperbole? What the fuck are we talking about, bro? I'm losing the sauce here. ...that you're prepared to bow down to their demands if they put enough pressure on you. Bow and down? so inevitably, their demands are never going to end. They'll literally... Their, their demand? Like... What is happening here? Never be happy, because there's always going to be some other thing, some other piece of problematic lore, some other rule or exclusionary detail that has to be altered to comply with their constantly evolving demands, and all in the name of inclusion and oh, diversity. Shit. Because these people don't care about your hobby, they don't care about integrating into a community of like-minded individuals, all they care about is that the community bends and reshapes itself to suit them, until eventually they bend it so much that it breaks.
People like that are complete and utter poison for any hobby. I agree with you, but point those people out. Like, because I think there are people like that. I think the problem is they're actually a pretty small minority. But it's very useful when making content to, like, size that up and conflate a lazy corporation with poopy butthole people that may well feel exactly the way he is describing. Those people absolutely suck. I hate them. Shouldn't I shouldn't. I should be better than that. I shouldn't hate them. But I fucking hate them. But it's so weird to conflate what is happening to that. It just feels like you're making it something it's not to just fit into a narrative that has served you very well on your platform. And that makes it disingenuous. So it's like, I think he's on the right side of this and yet still turning into like low hanging fruit, like culture war yelling. And, and like, this is by the way, why I, I don't have fucking, uh, like I can't exist online without both sides hating me because like, I can't just cheer this shit on. I can see the conflation and it bothers me. Any fandom, any franchise, all they ever managed to do is stir up conflict, resentment and division, driving people away and yes, turning. Yes, they do. They are also like five people fans against the very company that tries to pander to them because their very reason for existing is to undermine and destroy the thing they claim that they're trying to save and if you've got any common sense whatsoever or any love for the fandom that you're so passionate about you'll think very carefully before bending the knee to them anyway that's all i've got for today go away now Okay, well, there there you go. There you go on that one. Good video, I guess? I don't know. Fuck! Do you see what I mean, though? It's like we make it into a boogeyman. I just feel like there's this, this like, conflation, and we, we need to... You need to sensationalize it. You need to give it some... You know? And it undermines the whole thing. It's like... And, and by the way, one of the things that, that really irritates me about this kind of stuff is the company then gets to shield themselves because they can conflate all the criticism with this energy. Do you know what I'm saying? And it's like, bro, like, ugh. yeah, irritating, irritating. Uh, he had some points there. He obviously doesn't know the lore at all, um, but that's okay. Nope, not a lot of people do. It's uh, it's quite complicated and takes years of careful study to uh, actually understand. Uh, I did I did enjoy reacting to that though. Um, I like the the drinker generally, but I also just like you know you guys know me like I gotta keep it a stack, uh, and uh, there's just a lot of inaccuracies in that video. All right, what else is going on? What else is going on? Oh yeah, the gift card giveaway. Okay, let me uh, let me check it out. Let me let me see if we can get that cracking for you guys. So I have to remember how to do this on Twitch. I always forget how to do this. I think it's in Creator Dashboard, maybe. Create a dashboard, really? Maybe? Mm. Is it in here? Community. Uh, maybe it's over here. Activity, maybe? No. Follower list? No. Maybe it's in analytics? Ooh, okay, maybe this is it. Earnings? View details. 
Download my subscriber list. Hell yeah. Boom. Okay, and now I have to do this on YouTube, too. So give me a second here. Hmm. I think it's in here. I think it's in here. Total members? Hmm. I know there's a way to get this. Oh, wait. Is this it right here? I think I got it. I think I got it. Um, okay, wait, no, this is it. See your members. Okay, downloading here. Ha ha. Ha ha. Okay, then I got to make a Google spreadsheet. Give me just a moment here. Blank sheet. What? Got it. Import. Upload. Wait, what? Okay, that's there. That's the membership levels. Wait a minute. Hang on now. Hang on now. Download. Your members, April, blah, 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 blah. Okay, I think that's it. Okay, let's see here. Import the data. Import the data. Wait, what? Oh, okay, here we go. <laughs> Okay, and then we import this one. Um, append, append current sheet, import data. I think we got it. Give me a second. Oh, hell yeah. All right. All right. We're good to go over here. So we have 930 members, which, by the way, we've got to make a push and a drive. I want to get to 2,000 members. I won't sit. And also, we need more subscribers on this channel. Part of the reason why uh, we're not getting all the, the biggest numbers is because we don't have the subscribers. We need subscribers. Are you subscribed to this channel? Sheesh. Okay, let's get the random number dice roller. I think this is the one. Okay. So I'll pull this up so you guys can see it better. 930. One of those. Can you guys see that? Oh, mother of... Mother of Pearl. Okay, you see that? 930 right there? You see that? Stream more? Uh, I'm going to. I think I might. 
the suspense. All right, everybody, here we go. Let's find out who's going to win the $200 GameStop gift card. Oh, who could it be? Ooh, what number is it going to be? Ooh. Ready? All right, I'm going to stop it in three, two, one. 857. Eight hundred and fifty-seven. Who is it? Eight fifty-seven. EQ nine 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 nine. EQ. 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 That's my alt. Yeah. Well, you'll have to prove it. EQ999 said I could have it. Oh, okay. That's me for sure. Oh, shit. Now I don't know. So that is a prime uh, stream or a sub. Twitch user. So somebody on Twitch won it. Isn't that crazy? Wow. Pretty crazy. Yeah, that was cool. Uh, okay, what else is going on, guys? Should we get out of here? Is there anything else we need to talk about? Anything else? You had a meeting? Whoever's Twitch that is, they better actually hit me up. There's the drinker versus Mahler debate on Fallout. You know... Uh, I think Agent Llama likes Josh being super triggered. Is that what it is? You just want me to get triggered, man. Who won? EQ99999. Hey, I like Fallout a lot. Oh, I like Fallout a lot, too. I have no nerd coin because I keep losing it all. Drinker likes Fallout. That's good. Mahler hates everything. I don't think he hates everything, but he hates a lot of shit. Somebody, what? what's some shit he likes? I'm sure he likes some stuff. He's got to like some stuff. I think RPK enjoys triggering you. Yeah, I agree. I agree. Lord of the Rings? Andor? Oh, Jesus Christ. That doesn't even count. What is he like besides Andor? The OT. The Joker movie. I like the Joker movie. He likes pizza. I like pizza. So does Toast and MTTSH. What? He likes booty. I like booty. He likes Godzilla minus one. I haven't seen it. The Alias show? Dude, the Alias show is lit. He acted like Fallout was the worst thing he's ever seen. Oh, interesting. He likes the sound of his voice. I mean, you find me a YouTuber that doesn't like the sound of their own voice, and I'll probably find you a YouTuber that uses uh, a fake voice. He likes the first Alien and the second. Those are both incredible. Give us some ASMR. Okay, guys. So I'm just here trying to talk about my stream and, uh, you know, talk about the uh, female custodies. And... <laughs> there you go. I should have made you pay for that. Fuck. Uh, yo, you and Mahler should do a show talking about Dave and Star Wars. Can you imagine? Can you imagine if I like quit Nerd Theory and then did a did a show with Mahler? 
I don't know. He likes shitting on people's hard work. Well, I like doing that too. Tim O'Brien with a five spot says, Sorry I joined late. Take my money, Josh. Uh, I'll have to rewatch slash listen to stream from the beginning. Andor is boring. Josh is the man. Nerd vengeance for life. Tim O'Brien, ladies and gentlemen. A, now, a smart man who knows how to use his money intelligently and also has good opinions. Tim O'Brien, everybody. Ladies and gentlemen, Tim O'Brien. Ladies and gentlemen. Thanks, bud. Uh, if something doesn't perfectly make sense the entire time, then he's not able to enjoy it. Well, I mean, some people are probably like that. You know, it's like, sure, that's a valid uh, way to think about content. I don't know if it's uh, representative of most people, though. Tim is Josh's burners account. I mean, maybe. I mean, maybe. This is America. Oh, I'm sorry. I thought this was America. Uh, it isn't. Mahler is definitely in the minority on this one. Yeah, I could probably put that together. Seems that, to be that way. Yeah. It's a fantasy, LOL. You already have to suspend belief. Yeah, no, I, I agree. I mean, and I tend to fall on that side of things, too. I think uh, mise-en-scene and... Uh, I always forget the word. It's a big old H word that uh, Richard Donner used to say all the time. Uh, but essentially, it's, it's the idea of if the world of the movie is consistent to its own world, it doesn't have to represent our reality, right? So that's the way that I tend to feel about things and believe things. You know, I, I heard uh, Red Letter Media made this point many years ago where it, uh, he said, you may not have noticed this, but your brain did. And the point is, I think sometimes with movies, especially people that aren't like fully into the craft of filmmaking, they'll just not like something. And maybe they don't even like totally understand why, but it's usually something that happens that takes the brain out of that escapist state. You know, what's kind of ironic about that is if that is really the way Mahler views content, then maybe he doesn't really believe in escapism. Yeah, that's the word. Versimilitude. Yeah. So uh, Richard Donner would talk about this a lot. And and I I think he's pretty great. You know. But yeah, what do you think about that? Like, wouldn't that imply you're not actually practicing escapism because you're literally bringing your critical, maybe even pedantic mindset to the movie or the show? <laughs> yeah. Uh, can we do calls? It feels like it's been a while. I can't... I don't want to do calls today. I Honestly, I don't really want to do calls on public streams, but I could do some calls maybe next Wednesday when we do our Nerdvenger stream. I'd be down to do something like that. Mm-hmm. Oh, that's Robert Meyer Burnett's favorite favorite word? Well, now it's mine. Now it's mine. Uh, RLM liked Andor. Good review. Uh, I couldn't really get through that review. But, uh, you know, fair play to them. Uh, isn't there regular streams on Wednesday as well? Yeah, so I usually stream in the morning, and then I do the Nerdvenger stream at night. Mm -hmm. He says it at least twice a day. I had no idea. Dude, I bet me and uh, RBM would get along. Too bad he ghosted me in the DMs. <laughs> Didn't you get triggered that they made fun of George Lucas? Are you reading my journal, dude? Are you breaking into my house and reading my journal? Yeah. Yeah, maybe I did. What of it? Talk about the Joseph Quinn interview. Uh, what about it? He's just kind of saying, like, they're taking it real serious and shit like that, right? Uh, I'm sorry. Yeah, you should be. Uh, are you 
Did you finally let Rob play Hell Divers with you? That's a weird way to say it. I mean, I would I would totally play with Rob. Try again, Josh, says Evil Diner 666. You and RBM should stream, Josh? Well, I would be open to it. You know what I mean? Does he still stream with Campia? How could Loki possibly get out of that tree? I think he's probably stuck there. Give us some finger guns and a wink. I thought you told him that he didn't have the proper stratagems to play with you yet, but maybe you were joking. <laughs> what? Yeah, I was obviously joking. I mean, what level is he, though? <laughs> now I'm kind of like thinking back to it. Maybe I did say that, actually. Yes, Rob does stream with Campia still, but though, sir, as the weeks, John has Chris Carr. Oh, okay. Is there news on Galactus casting? Uh, I think it's probably just going to be Javier Bardem. That's what's out there right now. I don't really know. Hey, Trent, thanks for the five spot, baby. Uh, there was no message attached, though. But if you just put it into the chat, I'll read it. Unless I don't like what you asked, and then I won't read it. But either way, I appreciate you. No offense, but I'm not a big fan of Jay Campia. Yeah. Look, I, I have a lot of respect for John Campia. Meant to say he's with John every other day. Oh, okay. Gotcha. Gotcha. Yeah. Remember when John Campia shit on Ahsoka and you got triggered? God damn it, Agent Llama! God damn it, bro. And this is so funny where people are like, uh, people will come in and be like, you're you have an echo chamber here. It's all sycophants, and I'm like, yeah, I fucking wish, dude. I fucking wish that's what it was. That would be great. <laughs> like you, you must be new here. Where are the sycophants? Do we have some? Do we have some? Josh is always right. Better. Do you remember when John Cambia talked about Spider-Man's balls? Uh, yeah, it was uh, the wiener, but yeah. Do you remember when... Yeah, oh, no, all right, I just read that. Give me a shill check and I'll consider it. Okay, we'll, we'll check it out. We'll, we'll see what we can do. Currently watching Ungentlemanly Warfare with Cavill. Love it so far. If Guy Ritchie's version of Inglorious Bastards. That sounds lit, dude. I definitely want to get out there and see it. This weekend, though, I think we're just kind of chilling. We've been doing a lot, and I think we're traveling again next weekend. Do I remember the last time I washed my hands? Dude, I don't wash my hands, bro. Come on, man. Remember when Theory wasn't filling the Rebel Moon trailer and you said he was insane? I don't think I said he was insane. Because I probably wouldn't go that easy on him, you know? Uh, do you remember when Cavill will be able to get Warhammer Project done? I think he will be able to get that done. Yeah. Josh, you should look at the comment Fortnite used for the Marvel... Uh, look at the comment Fortnite used for the Marvel crossover. Uh, what do you mean? What do you mean by that? Remember when... Theory couldn't see Dr. Manhattan's BBC. Oh, yeah. I remember that. Yeah, that was funny. What do you think about the shadow casting? What do I think about the shadow casting? What are you talking about? Are they making a movie with the shadow? Didn't they already make one? You're talking about the Will Eisner shit? Is that what you're talking about, bro? What are you talking about, bro? 
Hey, bro, what you talking about, bro? Oh, Shadow for Hedgehog. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think it's cool. I like uh, Keanu. I think Keanu's good. I like Keanu, man. I wish it would have been Hayden, but mm, can't always get what you want. Uh, Josh, do you think X-Men 97 will use Sunspot to introduce the new mutants? Ooh. Well, the new mutants already exist in that universe. We've seen the picture of Forge hanging out with them and, like, Strongman and some of the others, like Wolfsbane. So they already exist in there. But uh, maybe he could join them. That'd be kind of cute. That'd be kind of chill. I'm really... Glad Rebel Moon isn't a part of Star Wars. <laughs> Do you remember when you remembered? <laughs> yeah, no, yeah, I, I'm, I think. Nimrod plus Master Mold equal Bastion? Yeah, probably. Probably. And that's cool, man. I'm excited to see what they do with the rest of X-Men 97. I think it's going to be fun. I think it's going to be real fun. Okay. Normally here, I might uh, hop on some Fortnite, but... Uh, Got to get my RAM fixed. So I'm going to get on out of here. I appreciate you. Thank you so much, everybody. Thank you for the subscribes. Thank you for the member chats, the super chats. Thank you for hanging out in the chat chat. Uh, thanks for liking the video. Appreciate it, you guys. Thanks for being here. Appreciate you. Yeah, Adam. No ditty. For real, no ditty on that one. Uh, appreciate you guys. Have a good weekend. We'll have some vids uh, for you over the weekend. And then uh, who knows? Maybe I'll even do a Twitch stream over the weekend. We'll see. We'll see. We'll see. We'll see. But uh, either way, we'll be back at it on Monday. Okay? Appreciate y'all. As I always say, I hope you are having an awesome and a nerdy day. And I'll see you in the next video. Is everybody gone?
Did everybody leave? Leave, 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 leave. Ah, what a nice stream. You know, nice and positive, just updating you guys about Marvel with absolutely no toxicity and no drama. Breaking down Forbes and Disney in a completely unemotional, analytical way that ruffled zero feathers. Dick Ryden, the critical drinker, and just saying he is right every single time. Man, I love it around here. I hope you do, too. Open up your third eye and wash out your stinky butt. 